<clears throat> right, right, right. Just let social media catch up. Just gonna let social media catch up. I'm also going to get the link that I can uh, send to everyone. Is everyone come? Oh, hello. Evening all. Lee Ashby here, Matt Across the Sphere of Memories. Hope you're all good. Evening, Jimmy. He's on YouTube, so that's all cool. Any of you guys coming through on Facebook this evening, if you can just click on the uh, link on the... Um, on the actual post before you come into the video then i uh, should be able to uh see all your names who's uh quoting to me i'm just going to double check that uh no one else needs to come in the group yet someone's asked to come in the group and i'm just going to get the link now and i'll post it in the uh comments that people can uh, click on so i'm going to post that one in there hopefully it should come up then i've done some weird update on that as well right hi frank how's it going hello lisa and hello mr flatman there how's it going buddy so there's one there look that's basically what it looks like look if you don't get to click on the link and uh, go through the privacy thing so i can see your name on your profile yeah look, i've just put uh, one of the links there through my group you can just click on that and it gives you uh, the privacy permission that like so and it's just in the post look before you uh, come in. Stephen sorted. Hello, buddy. Otherwise, look, it'll come up like that. But uh, if you've clicked on the link and registered it, then it'll uh, come up like that. So I can quote you guys um, when I uh, send over, when I um, talk questions to the man. So I've just posted uh, that link for everyone in all the groups. Everyone can click on that link. And then um, I've just done it in that one, and I'm going to do it in my page as well. Um, and then we can uh, hopefully sort everyone out on Facebook. Give me down, buddy. I'm on a live interview, man. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else with the window. I'm like, Jesus, breath. It's like a running joke with my daughter. Sorry about the gangster talk there. I was calling it. <laughs> Me and my 10 year old daughter were going, bruv, and stuff like that. that classic. Right. Uh, and then I'm just going to post it in that one as well. So then we should be all good. Should be all good. How is everyone? Everyone got questions? Going to put to Martin? Hi, Bob. How's it going? He's all sorted as well. So look, I've put the link in there. All you guys on Facebook. When I get Martin on, uh, I can quote your questions on screen. Uh, I'll be showing you like uh, pictures of his career and talking to Martin about all that as well. Um, I've got loads of my questions as well myself. But obviously, uh, if you guys have got the same sort of questions, what I'm looking at, I quote you guys on the screen anyway. So I'm not sure who that is, but hopefully they can click on that link here in the uh, comments. Then I'll be able to see who that is, because it should come up like that. Evening, David. And evening, Keith. Hope you're good. So, looks like most people have uh, sorted out the Facebook. There's only two I saw there. One saying hi, Lee, and one there. So, hopefully, you're all good, Anne. You can see your profile, so that's all good. There you go. Mr. Evans is sorted. How's it going? Anthony Douglas is all sorted. So it looks like most of you are on it on the Facebook, so all good. Got some uh, cheeky old photos to go through tonight with Martin as well to bring up some cool memories. Uh, uh, highly ask him about the Martin Dugard bend at Oxford. Okay, Shane, I will do. Mr. Prinslow, how's it going? Peter Prinslow from the USA live. What time is it uh, there, Peter? I've actually got a uh, American motocross and supercross start on Thursday night, 8 p.m. UK, my time. And I think it's going to be midday for him. I think we're eight hours ahead. He's in Southern California, I think it is. 
and that's uh, Mike LaRocco. So looking forward to that on Monday as well. And don't forget tomorrow night, any of you Speedway fans, I'm on here live again tomorrow night at seven o'clock uh, UK time with uh, Mr. Steve Schofield as well. So that should be another beauty. So it's all good. All right, so I'm just double checking. Looks like Shane's all sorted as well. So we'll get that on. Here he is, my man, Marvin Cox. Proper legend, I believe. I'm just going to check my little thing down here in the corner. Uh, a week this Friday, so a week from this Friday, we, I'm going to be with the man himself on the 18th of August. And I think we're doing it at 7 p.m. We need plenty of time. Some of the uh, photographs we've been swapping around, um, all clean. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So we're going to go with the legend himself, Mr. Marvin Cox as well. Really looking forward to that one. We've got loads of really cool pictures and loads of memories to go through. So many things to discuss in Marvin's career, of course. Uh, his nickname was always Cocker. Um, we've got loads of uh, cool things to talk about. Um, all the German license thing and loads of stuff about the teams and, and Paul and the reason leaving Paul and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, so you're all six hours behind Peter. Whereabouts are you in uh, based in America? There you go. Shane's saying hi to Cocker as well. Mr. Cox, what a legend. Yes, Lisa. So we'll have him on on the 18th of August. So a week this Friday and that'll be 7 p.m. UK time as well. So we have plenty of time. I'm sure, we'll do a good three hours on that one. <laughs> uh, yes, that would be a good idea. Jimmy, maybe get some uh, rival stuff on, eh? I did a really cool one together. You probably may have seen it with, um, I did Jeremy Doncaster with Chris Louie. I did uh, Bruce Pennell with uh, Eric Gunderson, was really cool. I did a Christmas special one that was quite cool. I did John Davis, Neil Middleditch, who I'm going to need to do one with Neil Middleditch. John Davis, Dennis Sigalos. I'm doing one with Dennis Sigalos as well on his own. I've been talking to loads of riders. I've been talking to Amanda Castagna. I'm doing Barry Briggs anytime soon. I've spoke to Phil Morris. I'm going to do one with Phil Morris as well. So looking forward to that. And I've also, Billy Hamill rang me as well. So I was like quite starstruck when he ran me on Facebook. He did have some good banter. He called me all sorts of names as well, which was really funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, he said he's going to be sort of ready to do it by the, by sort of, uh, well, in the next couple of months, he said. I think he said September, October, he'd be able to do it. So I can't wait to get Billy Amhorn. I did do a live with Sam and Malenko. I have done a live with Ronnie Corey. And I did do a live with Simon Cross. But I'm going to do a um, a new one with Simon Cross because his internet was quite bad at the time in his chateau in France. <laughs> so we will... Ah, there you go. There's Peter's uh, business look, in Birmingham, Alabama. Autoheadperformance.com if anyone wants to check that out. Peter is uh, doing all his uh, good stuff. Evening. Hope you're all good. Hi, Jonathan. I will be watching it for a bit till Bellevue versus Sheffield, Bewley versus Woofy. Yeah, I'm sure a few people will be recording that and some may be watching the Speedway Live and then uh, watching the recording of this after maybe. Yes, I'd love to get him on. I've actually got his number. I've messaged him. I couldn't get hold of him, so I might have to try and do it through Bruce Pennell. Hopefully, Bruce Pennell can hook me up with it. Probably not liking the mod cons. <laughs> Yo, Mr. Leon Day. How's it going, buddy? Done any riding in the last week or so? Keep an eye on all your stuff. I sent you one of those pictures I just randomly found on my phone the other day. Oh, yeah, I've been chasing that man, David. <laughs> Also been chasing that man as well, <laughs> only for a couple of years. <laughs> I messaged Phil Collins again the other day. I messaged Les Collins as well the other day. And also I'm going to be ringing up Peter Collins again and uh, getting him back on as well, because we talked about doing a part two. It wasn't all that long ago. I did a, a part one with Peter Collins on the phone. Much love, mum. We had a good, nice day down in Timmouth and Devon yesterday at my mum and sister's. With all the family, it was really nice. Really enjoyed it. Hope you're good, Mum. Had some few sad things going on lately, so I'm sure that was nice to um, 
of a family down down there yesterday. Right, so I've put that in there. I've got my questions ready to go. I've only got about 160, so Martin should flow through these. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, Mr. Dugard's been uh, racking his brain ready for this. <laughs> got lots of cool pictures to go through. Um, just that's the backgrounds there. I was looking through there. Yeah, I like talking about the bullet. There's Mr. Dugard and Billy the Bullet Hamill. Looking forward to doing that, obviously. Oh, another one I uh, that you guys are like, another one I've uh, spoken to is uh, Sean Wilson as well. I've spoken to Sean Wilson, so I'm going to sort out a date for that one as well. Any of you that are into the motocross and supercross as well, I'm having American legend Mike LaRocco this Thursday uh, night as well, 8 o'clock, because he's in California, which is midday for him. We're eight hours ahead. And like I said, tomorrow, 7 o'clock, we're doing... Um, uh, Steve Schofield as well. So looking forward to that. I've also messaged Craig Broyce today. Anthony, check that out. Haven't met, haven't messaged Shane Parker though. I haven't got a contact there. I'm not sure if he's on social media. If any of you guys have got a contact with Shane Parker, hook me up. I haven't seen him on social media. Not that I can think of. But I'd love to do one with him, yeah. I have messaged Craig Boyce today because he come on to one of the lives and I was like, but we see, come on. <laughs> Hopefully, Boise can come on tomorrow as well with his uh, old teammate, uh, Mr. Schofield. Yeah, true. The weekend was haywire, wasn't it? <laughs> All rained off dry weather rider at my age, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too much hard work. It's all the cleaning, isn't it? It's not just the riding. Like when we were kids doing that, woo, going through, flat out, loving life. And then uh, all of a sudden, one day you had to start cleaning it yourself, and then it wasn't so cool. Yes, I'm going to do Mr. Nigel Flatman as well. Talk about all the Ipswich days, Mark, and all that. And who was the rider now that I'm just trying to think uh, who discussed that? Who did he get hooked up with? Can't remember. Who, who, who did those two guys were dinging into each other? I forgot who I did an interview with now that we were talking about it, weren't we? <laughs> I'll have to do that as well. But yeah, I have spoke to so many riders. I spoke to uh, uh, Darren Wilson as well the other day, Bradley Wilson, Dean's dad. From New Zealand, said to him, I'm going to get him on. He's got uh, loads of cool stories. He did motocross as well. And and uh, talking about, we can talk about the fact that obviously Bradley coming along and is still riding now. He's hoping to get into the British racing again soon. Now his uh, average hopefully goes down to a, a decent level. All right, let me just check my WhatsApp to make sure Martin's not going to have any issues. There is no link. I'll try again, Mr. Dugard. <laughs> that means, oh, just as I spoke look, on WhatsApp, dear Lee, email is blah, blah, blah for Mr. Schofield, ready for tomorrow. And I'll just show you there, look. I won't show you the email, but look, I've just been showing him some photos, look, of him and Martin Dugard at the bottom there. I said my, my next two interviews on there. there. They're both talking to each other and racing there look, at the bottom. So I'm just getting back onto my email. <laughs> so that means I didn't even copy the link on, did I? I'm sure I did. Give us a second, guys. I'm just going to uh, get back on my email again to speak to Mr. Dugard, who just walked up me and said that um, there wasn't any uh, link on the email, but I'm just checking to see what I've just sent. Don't tell me I didn't copy and paste. <laughs> I didn't even copy and paste. What a dickhead. Sorry about that, Martin. <laughs> Might out, might it? If I actually paste it. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Can't get the staff, see? Absolute jeb end. Sorry about that, mine. <laughs> He's probably thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, check my mum out with the jokes. You're a waste of paste. Ouch. That is, that is awful. Love to do Bo Peterson. Obviously, he was one of the heroes when I was young, racing with Phil Crump, but uh, Bo Peterson said that he did, didn't really want to do it. Yeah, Travis McGowan would be good. Hopefully, you guys here on thing. I can see you now, mine. I can see you come in. We'll bring you in in a second. 
we can only hear you when I bring you in the screen. So the main man is here, so we're gonna have to get the uh, video going, but just to those people there, a couple of you that haven't registered, all you've got to do is click on the link in the post, and then I'll be able to see and quote you to Martin with your questions like that. Look, all these guys have got all their names ready to go. Somewhere in the comments, I put that in there anyway. So here we go then, let's get this underway. <laughs> Here we go then. Mm. Hopefully it's all good. Mr. Dugard. How are you? All right. How's it going? You can hear me all good? Yeah, lovely and clear. Beautiful. I can hear you all good. How good. are you? How are you, mate? Not too bad. Not too bad considering it's the middle of the season and life still rolls on in, as, it, as it does with Speedway. You know, I tend to be a lot of places at the moment. I'm helping Sam Hagen at the moment. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been to Poland a few times, a few long ass trips around, but that's part of life, isn't it? Still, still love the travelling, Martin. Or that... <laughs> it is funny. Like I didn't really used to like the travelling, but I've got used to the travelling. I like the travelling now, but it is just the older you get, the harder it is. And uh, yeah. yeah, the 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 four night drives are the hard ones, and uh, getting home. It's just so nice to get home, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's basically what you've been up to lately, then. Um, last week I was in Poland. From I left Sunday and and got back Wednesday morning. So that was um, a full sort of three days here, there, and everywhere. But I got to say, it's still very enjoyable, but just very hard work, especially when you get to my age. So uh, how do you find things then, being on the other side of the fence? Does that do you ever get wish you were still riding, have that urge still, or you're just uh, happy with what you're doing? What's uh, what's your thoughts on the other side of the fence? I think riding is the easiest part of it. Um, it is very hard. I think I think the problems with Speedway is it has progressed in such a way that you get your mechanics do everything for you. The riders just ride the bike. Uh, the feedback you get from certain riders isn't exactly what you see on the track. And it, it is very hard for me to sort of see what's going on and then try and dial that into something that is um, is now applicable. Yeah. So um, I have to sp say that Speedway is in a, a bit of a muddle all around the world. And mm -hmm. uh, it just needs someone to sit down who's really strong just to sort it out because it will come a crunch one day where it will just fall flat on its face. Obviously, you've, you've obviously seen, seen that um, it looks like we might be losing Peterborough and potentially, uh, say, Wolves as well, which is another big one uh, at the end of this season. Uh, what's your yeah. thoughts about that? Obviously, that's a big thing. I'm not sure um, if they can go to the league or what. What's your thoughts, Martin? I, I'm, not so, I'm not so frightened about Peterborough because I never went very well around there. <laughs> um, I, I think... It's sad that we've got to this stage where clubs are fighting for survival. Yeah. Um, Peterborough particularly haven't had a very good season for themselves this year to sort of promote themselves to say, look, we are a speedway club. Um, whether or not they've given up at the start of the year, who knows? But um, it is it is very hard to see that clubs drop out all the time, as Eastbourne did. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a few more on the road as well. So uh, mm. I think if we're losing clubs like that, someone's got to sit down and, and look at it, in, in especially in the UK. Um, but I don't think it's uh, overnight it's going to happen. 
but it will need somebody who who is brave enough to turn around and say, right, to save the sport, this is what we're going to do. I can't see how, me personally, I can't see how we go to Poland and it is absolutely thriving out there. Yeah. And you come to the UK, which is meant to be like, meant to be ahead of Poland as in, as in the way we live. And we can't get a thousand people or 1500 people through the game. And Poland, they're just walking through the door in thousands. So I think um, something is wrong somewhere. And I don't think it's a, it's down to the riders. I think it's just the way the riders have all moved forward. Um, I just don't think the promoters have moved forward or um, the supporters aren't moving forward with the times. Yeah, because quite a few people sort of mentioned that before. They sort of, uh, around some of the stadiums, you'd see like the fans that were like, watching in the 80s and 90s are still there and not necessarily, you know, new new fans. So, like you said, maybe it's an advertising thing. It needs some sort of big shake-up of some sort. Yeah, I I don't know. I can't say what it's going to... If I did, I'd be I'd be a very rich person. Yeah. But I, think, I think the problem being is it's, it's just unfortunate the way it's being dealt with at the moment. And everybody's, yeah, yeah, we'd be all right next year. We'd be all right next year next year will never ever come and i think that's the problem and i think someone someone will have to be brave and slap someone around and say right we're doing it this way and and i've got to say they do that in poland it is if you turn up late you're fined if you if you're not wearing the dress code you're fined they, they get paid a lot of money in poland um i think that sort of mentality has to sort of come to the uk with you are a team um i know it doesn't suit everybody but I think it is something that you need to sort of bring into it to be recognised as a professional sport. Mm. It's like very professional, but they're quite ruthless uh, over there as well, aren't they? they oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. But if they're paying big money to the big boys and they're yep. not producing the points, see you later. Yeah. And I think that's that's why they are um, so so dominant the way they... Um, they deal with it, their sport out there. I don't think it's just speedway. I think it is all sport. It is. I've been over with Sam um, a couple of weeks or, or last week, yeah. and even at that age, in the under twenty-four, they are absolutely ruthless. Right. And I said to Sam, "Well, you've got to understand these boys. That's all they have yeah. is speedway. They they're brought up to race speedway, and no matter what happens, they will put their life on the line just to." to win a race so it is yeah it's a different it's a different packet of uh, speedway races out there than it is in the uk i was going to ask you obviously uh with the esport thing um is there ever any chance of that coming back What's, what do you know about that um i'm i'm not the one to to um be able to say anything about that i i have nothing to do with the stadium and um, that's yeah. the other part of the family um as far as I'm aware from, from what I hear, there is no way Speedway will go back. And I think the people that were trying to save Speedway understand that as well. Yeah. Um, they are looking for uh, a new ground to put Speedway, as people like Wolverhampton are, and yeah. Reading have been for years. Yeah, um, yeah. so I think um, finding somewhere locally is out of question. Yeah. But... Who, who knows? I, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there will be Speedway back there. But um, it wasn't anything to do with the family why it, it went under. It was just, unfortunately, we were robbed. Not good. No, no. So they, they say you still use the stadium, don't they? Is that, do they have the car yeah. racing? Or yeah, yeah they, they have stock car racing on there. Um, the, the, the money they take from stock car racing, they've only had... They have really big meetings on bank holidays. Mm. Um, that pays for the rent of the stadium and keeps the stadium going. Um, who who knows what what is around the corner? I know that um, everybody's aware that it has been put in for planning many times. Mm -hmm. um, whether that goes forward again, don't know. I don't know. That's the thing now, isn't it? Most of it all ends up in housing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the problem being is, when you look at the map, anything up from the A22 on the left-hand side has no infrastructure for housing. But if someone's got some big money and they want to put the infrastructure in there, then then it will happen. Yeah. 
Um, they have started building now sort of at the top of the, the roundabout, which is the bow ship area, which is two miles away, and they're gradually working their way back down. I, I think soon you will find that Howsham will link into Polgate, Polgate will link into Eastbourne. It's not that far from each other now. And gradually they will fill up uh, the Sussex county side. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened at Swindon. And then literally there was a house touching the side of the pits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was up there probably a couple of years ago, just before yeah. COVID um, mm -hmm. with Tom. And obviously they put you in a different way into the stadium because I always used to go out around the back, around the yeah, grandstand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this time I was like, wow, look how close those houses are. Mm. And the first thing I thought was, well, if I own that house, I would complain about yeah. the noise. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, that's how it's much, isn't it? But, yeah. yeah. Reality is a bit around. Yeah. Yes, but on good news, there's uh, you've seen your old club, uh, Oxford. I went to the opening night and I went again uh, this season. Um, yeah. Got to go down there. It looks uh, really good. I was uh, really surprised how cool it was. They've done a great job because it was proper run down and they've done amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I've probably been up there three or four times. Um, mm -hmm. Really enjoyed myself every time I've been up there. Yeah. I have to say that um, the people that have made it work have done a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. They've uh, they've turned it around, like you said. It was a bit of a dump, yeah. or it was well. The the whole idea from the uh, the company that owned it was to run it into the ground, then it become an eyesore, then they could knock it down. But because it was saved by the tote at the end of the stadium, they they couldn't do that. So. Um, I think they've all accepted that it was going to stay. The council said it was going to stay, and, and that's what it did. But it would it take 10, 12 years to do it? Or... Oh, it's a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it was nice. I like the way they've done the pits down the back straight. Um, I still prefer hiding down the bottom under the tunnel. It has that little bit of um, nostalgia about it. But, yeah, I think um, what they're doing is great, and I – they are looking for the future, and uh, I think it's quite good that they, they have a young um, fan base as well, yeah. which is thing, yeah. yeah, which is all the families and that from the estate behind them. Yeah. I like that they do the all the fans can go in the pits for a half hour or whatever they do and mingle with the riders and pictures and things. That's what the new age is, and that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to interact more. Um, people yeah. expect that yeah. um, that there is nothing. Nothing wrong with that, yeah. but in in sort of in my day and that it was, you didn't allow or they didn't allow the people in the pits. Mm -hmm. But I think that is where other clubs have sort of thought, wow, well, maybe maybe that is wrong. Mm -hmm. But it, it's all those little things that working for Oxford, others could take it on board. Um, mm -hmm. Whether or not uh, Coventry will come back will be another big question. Yeah, because, yeah I've seen quite a bit of that. There's quite a lot going on with that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So it will be interesting. I don't know how far Swindon's down the the road of opening or closing. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be going. Uh, bizarrely, they're building the stadium and a lot of it's up, but it's all more around the fact that they just had to do that before they were allowed to carry on with the housing. So they're technically just sort of still building it. Uh, yeah. But it's dogs there, basically. That, that's what makes money. I don't think it's ever going to go there again. So again, when I spoke to Roscoe, he did an interview last week, just sort of talking about the same sort of thing, potentially new places and all that. But you're talking obviously years away, aren't you, when you talk about things like that? So it's a bit of a yeah. shame. Well, you look at Paul. I don't know how long they've got still down there. Mm, yeah. That's another one. And that's yeah. like in the city centre. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that when I spoke to the people down there, they're, they're unsure as well. Mm. So there is will be nothing down in the south. Apart from Plymouth. Yeah, scary. Mm. Mm. Well, fingers crossed some of these tracks come out. It looks like Oxford's back with a bang, so that's really good to see. So that's cool. Yep. Must know that man. He's uh, Mr. Cox has come on. He's coming on in a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Yeah, it should be good. Bit of a legend himself. Yes, definitely. You had some good times with him at Oxford as well, have you? Yeah, yeah. He... he i got to say, I, whenever me and Marvin bumping into each other, we always like, um, we seem to be very happy. And that he, he's, uh, we've had a few um, ding dongs in our time, as in racing wise. Yeah. And um, yeah, I ran into Marvin once when we was in Vienna Neustadt in Austria. 
and injured him, which I'm very sorry about, Marvin. But yeah, he, he's he's good as gold, and uh, yes, yeah, he's just unfortunate. He ended the way he did with his career with a, an accident. Yeah, I did see someone. Uh, where have I put that comment? I don't want to miss it. That person, uh, Shane Leach. He just said, uh, "Highly ask him about uh, the Martin Dugard bend at Oxford." Which one was that? Three and <laughs> or one and two? I don't know. Yeah, I was just about to say, well, which one is that? <laughs> you yeah. better let us know, Shane. What is? What are we talking about here? Let yeah. us know what you are actually asking. Well, it's a bit more of a clue. It's yeah, many, yeah. many years since I rode there. <laughs> what are we talking? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a look on here. I'm not sure who that is. There's no name on it, but highly did mine like riding with Hans Nielsen. Also, does he remember when the lights went off at Reading and we come out with the torch? Um, I don't remember the one at Reading. Okay. Um, Hans is the ultimate professional, and I learned with Hans that if he said something to you once, that's all he would say. He wouldn't repeat himself. He would tell you once, and as far as he was concerned, his job was done. Yeah. And he was the ultimate professional. Yeah. And, yeah, he was, he was the best one to learn from, and I learned a lot of stuff from him. Just unfortunately, it took me another 30 years to realise what he was talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, and I, I bumped into hands quite a few times when I've been abroad and that, and he's been there with the Danish team and I've been there with the English team and that. And we still have a laugh about when we were riding at Oxford. But he was, yeah, he was um, the ultimate professional. You had him, Marvin, and Wiggy as well. So um, I sort of grew up in a, a good company as it was. Yeah, you had some uh, proper legends there as well. You had uh, like a, it was a successful time as well, wasn't it? When you were there as well with them guys, they had uh, they were on a roll for quite a few years with the team, like you said, Andy Graham and all that. I remember it was yeah, uh, yeah. good time. Yeah, well, the, the thing was because I was at Eastbourne for um, 85, 86, I think 87, um, we won sort of the league or knockout cup. We always won a trophy during that, those course of those three years. Yeah. So when I went to Oxford and we won the trophies again, I just thought, oh, that's part and parcel of it. It's only when I went back to Eastbourne um, in 2000, that was the last time I'd ever won anything, I think, when we won the league. Yeah. So it was um, it was a bit of a shock uh, to realise, actually, it is hard work to win stuff, but when you're being carried along by like people like Marvin and Hans and Wiggy, um, it just seemed to roll into one and you didn't realise how lucky you was at that time. Mm -hmm. It's only yeah. when you sit back and you think, well, oh, I should have listened. I should have put a little bit more effort into life. Oh, Shane's just come back up. He's put one and two, so about puddles. Oh, uh, yeah, right around, the, right around the inside coming out of Ben 2, there was always a soft spot where the water used to run down. Yeah. And I always used to sort of splash through it, bounce off of it, pick up out of it. It was um it was the only place I could go forward and pass people. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you sort of got out of there and got right up close and come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that. Stealth line of home knowledge. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love a bit of that. Just gonna say hello to my uh nephew there. He's put highly as Michael written that underneath his uh mum's name. Hi Michael, hope you're good, buddy. Good to see you today. Much love to you. Uh right, I've got some legends already got oh Peter's on as well. Peter's on is the word <laughs> structure is the word it is yeah mm. i think pete's right i think that's what that's what we need but someone has to come down with a plan that is viable feasible for everybody the, the problem you have is that all the promoters in the uk that everybody is individual between them all and what suits scunthorpe doesn't suit an eastbourne promoter doesn't sort a Plymouth promoter or a Glasgow promoter. So between all of those promoters, one of them will have to give a little bit to make it work. And I think that's the problem is someone needs to come in, put a full structure together. Me personally, I think it would be good to go back to one league yeah. because there's not a lot of difference between the premiership and the championship now. I think there's two riders in it, Emil and uh, Doyley. Is that the, that's the only two that aren't doubling up. Yeah, they're all riding the same sort of... Yeah, so... Just mixing them up almost. Yeah, I think maybe maybe for a couple of years have rider control 
Um, so you're not paying people to travel, say, from the south of the UK up to, say, Glasgow or back down um, to Plymouth from the Midlands. Yeah. Put good riders that are local in those teams. Make them fair. Um, nobody's going to go and watch a team that's, that's doing poorly. But yeah. um, it, it may just sort of save the sport. Maybe. Maybe. Like you said, even the fact that there have been different teams and things like that might get a few more people in through the door and stuff like that. Yeah. If you've got local people in, I think that is that is the key. It's Yeah. It's no good having a team that's, that's struggling. Um, nobody really travels away anymore. The cost of traveling away is astronomical. Um, and I think that's what you've got to, just got to get your home fans in. And if you can draw that with local people, I think you're a little bit closer to uh, picking up a few extra fans. Yeah, it is available, yeah. For sure, we've got loads of uh, cool uh, riders come on as well as fans. Mr. Colin Richardson as well. I know he's uh, out in Dubai. Good evening, Martin and Lee. How are you, Colin? Are good evening, good? Colin. He's also put a question on as well. He's put, uh, when Martin was a kid, 15 years old, Bob used to get Gordon and I to go out after the meetings to wipe the poor kid at all around the fence till he got too good and was too quick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. And that, yeah. that is, I think that's where um, I learned quite quick because I know that Gordon was very stable. Colin was very stable as, as obviously as teammates. And I think that was, uh, they sort of dragged me along a lot quicker. Um, and then all of a sudden I stepped forward a little bit, a little bit. And then Colin got hurt down at Exeter one night. And then it was like, wow. Okay, and then um, that was the end of his career, as it was. But which was a shame because I think he had plenty more left in him. And uh, yeah, they sort of they all sort of stayed at that level, and I just sort of little steps forward, and then then the big step from going from the national league as it was then and up to the British league. That was successful as well, wasn't it? Straight away when you were young, you were going really well straight away, winning things and stuff like that with the league as well. I think you win that twice as well, didn't you, I think? Yeah, I think so. I, I can't remember. It was funny. I was talking, Martin Hagen said to me the other day, oh, do you remember when you did the Golden Greats at uh, Coventry? I was like, no. And that's when it's it's quite worrying. To, to be honest, I forget lots of, of my speedway yeah. career. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, whether it wasn't important or about a bang on the head too many times. Um, but... I still remember when I went to Big Osh with Tom and um, I said to him, I know where this stadium is. And when I got close to the stadium, it was like, maybe I don't exactly know where it is. And they built everywhere around it. I mean, yeah. here they had big new flats. The stadium had sort of been pulled down and rebuilt. And it was like, it wasn't quite as I remember it in 1990. So I was talking 30 years and I just presumed that I'd roll up and it would be the same as it is in England. But yeah. it was completely different. It was clean. It was it was lovely. And it was like far superior than I, I ever remember it. Yeah. Did you enjoy, because I know you rode in Poland, didn't you? I think you rode in Sweden as well. I've got some pictures on here as well. We can, I'll put up, but, um, did you enjoy uh, riding over there as well, Sweden, Poland? Poland, Poland was different because... Yeah. Um, we was lucky. We was we was years ahead of the poles when we went there. Yeah. When they opened it up from the communists to the yeah. um, the Europeans, as it was, um, we used to rock up. We used to we used to have clothes that fitted us compared to what the Polish people had in that day. Yeah. Um, it didn't take them long, and since like nineteen nineties until now, they've just turned the whole speedway game around, and they are they are head and shoulders above any of the other nations. And that's because they have had a, a program that they worked to. And I enjoyed it. It was slightly different to um, my look at the crowd in that photo. Yeah, right. I, I think I was, I did a three meetings that year because yeah. unfortunately for me, I think it was me, Lee Adams and Hans Nielsen in that team. Yeah. And I think, Hands couldn't make it, or Lee was injured. So I did three meetings, and I had a good run. Mm. Like I think I think I had a maximum in one, and, and that. But Hands just lent me his bike, which I knew was good, and there was no point in the finger if it wasn't, because he would have rolled up and scored fifteen on it. <laughs> so uh, I couldn't sort of turn around and go, 
I didn't like your bike, but yeah. it, was, it was one of those things. But it was very enjoyable. Um, I was a bit too young, really, to appreciate um, what actually it meant out there. Mm-hmm. And when you sort of like uh, Sam and I and Martin, we, we went to Norway a couple of weeks ago and like a month ago. And we've just gone out to this beautiful track right out in the middle of um, nowhere. And you wouldn't think that there could be a, a nice speedway stadium there, but there was. And I hadn't been back there since I think '99, last time I went back there. Right. So it was, but it hadn't changed. It just got nicer and better. That's and uh, I think that's the problem here in the UK. Yeah. What you see is what you get, and there is no, there is no updates. Anybody's done. Mm-hmm. We're just sort of gradually dying with with everything, apart yeah. from obviously Bellevue. But even like I said a few years ago, that's uh, I'm 46 now. So what, when Sweden, the spin, Sweden stopped, it was like 42, 43. And they still had the same like dodgy uh, toilets at the back straight when I was like five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so and, uh, people... How they get away with it, I don't know. Uh, it's mad. Yeah, it it's is. Mad. Um, unfortunately, it is a little bit um, crazy what um, what we're left with, should we say. In a nice way. Yeah. Um, Barry Ann said, I pay to watch a team every week that loses mine. <laughs> so you follow them? Uh, do, do you, you follow the Plymouth band? <laughs> 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 oh, that's an interesting one. Philip Steele said, Barry Hearn would be the man to fix Speedway. I know he did a lot, didn't he, for darts? And yeah, yeah. He but then he, yeah, he, he turned it completely around. But hmm. would Barry look at... Um, Speedway, I doubt it. You've got to get people interested in it first to, to save it. They're not going to come along and see that Saints die and they just say, oh, well, let it die. Always, always, I know we're obviously Speedway, you know, fans and been in the Speedway all our lives and stuff like that. But when you think about it, it's such like an exciting sport, especially you watch it live. I think it's always so much better live than on the TV. I think that takes away the whole noise yeah. and speed and all that. But when you look at it, like, how you know when you've got people and then they have like bowls you know bowls indoor bowls on tv and all sorts of stuff and you just think jesus like yeah but the, the problem being is with indoor bowls you know it's gonna gonna happen because you don't have the have the worry of the the british weather you yeah. you don't have the the outlay of all the camera if it's rained off everybody goes i'll oh, see you later yeah. it's cost the, the television companies an absolute fortune to put that something on so that is one of the biggest things is, yeah, it's great to have TV there, but you can see why they're not really that interested in it. And I think it's a shame. I think it is a very good sport to um, be involved with and to watch and to follow. But like, I love BSN. I sit on there, I watch it. Um, don't have to go out of my house. I just watch, watch all, the, the, um, all the matches around. Yeah. So it, it makes life easier for me, but whether or not who is who is making the money from it, because um, I don't think uh, it's going back into the clubs, but that's BSN. If they're making money, that's good on them. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to, someone, someone took the chance to to put it out there and, and make a live stream. Yeah, definitely good. Yeah. Most things, all we've got, wow, everything's got that now, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For instance, I watched uh, Swindon Wildcats ice hockey. Watched them on live stream also. So you've got to have that part as well, for sure. Yeah, but well, it's part of technology, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, John. John, how's it going, buddy? He's just put uh, spent many Saturdays watching Martin at Eastbourne. Absolute legend and racer. Uh, wound up the away fans on a weekly basis. <laughs> well, it was always very popular. Yeah, yeah. I'm away. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's the problem. Is that I. Well, they, we know that they've tried to tidy up the sport and that, and um, there was obviously a me punching Stefan wasn't the best thing for me or Stefan, but it, it put it out there on uh, social media at the time and on mm-hmm. Sky and all of a sudden it lit everything back up. Yeah. I'm not saying it was the best thing to do. I can't remember anything about it, but I know that it got people talking yeah. for, for obviously for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with Speedway and, and most sports. If anything goes wrong, people talk about it. 
and I think you they've they've cleaned it up, but they got rid of all the villains. Nicky Pedersen, they, they sort of cleaned him up. He, he made sure that he wasn't allowed to say what he wanted to say. Um, I think that is one of the biggest problems that there. You got all the nice guys like Greg Hancock, Tony Rickardson, Smarzik. You have all them, but you, you don't have any villains anymore. Yeah, you can do like you said, as we know, everyone likes a bit of controversy and all the you know the local derbies that used to go on and it was yeah. like the crowd and cradley and all that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? I had a lot of spice to it, and at the end of the day, that's what people it excited them to, to be there. That's right. Yeah. And you've got to say that normally, um, without a question of doubt, there, there is hardly any violence between the fans. A few handbags may have gone off between each other and a couple of pints of beer may have gone, gone over a few people. But it's not like the football where they get fully aggressive and, and they, they go there to have a big fight before the meeting's even started. And I think that is um, something which we've got to say we're happy about. But there is nothing wrong with uh, winding everybody up and, and having a, a little bit of rivalry between local teams. <clears throat> There's all rivalry all the football now still and yeah. then the fans and stuff like that and you go if it's local derbies and things like that. So it's always a good thing. Definitely need uh, panto villains as well. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what people um, are missing. Yeah. Like all of the young kids, if they can shout at someone and get aggressive when they're younger, yeah. they're letting off steam. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't worry me if a little kid shouted at me much. <laughs> uh, the old classics of going through the tapes and you know, yeah. Well, I, me, me personally, I was lucky enough that you was allowed to move slightly at the start, a little bit, and then it come in that like no moving. But Hans Nielsen was absolutely fantastic at moving at the start. He used to creep, roll, and he knew when he was going to go, and the referee knew when he was going to go, and he made every start. Yeah. And I think that is something that they should bring back into it because it is more um, like a lot of people anticipate the start. And say, for instance, you had Jordan Jenkins pop out the start and you you had Smarzik who got at the back. People would pay to watch them pass somebody who, who you wouldn't expect to get be out in front rather than make it uh, a gator's paradise as it was. And I think maybe that's what they should do. Go back. Why was Speedway so good and so popular? And I think it's all the little things that they've tightened up on that have sort of taken that little bit of spice out. Yeah. Like when you watch the old World Finals, when they used to roll at the tapes and you're thinking, if they break, that person's out. But they used to roll right over them, get them stuck under the engines. And you think, wow, okay. But that was that was it. That was the yeah. excitement. Yeah. Even like you said, it had a bit of drama at the start line and then they would mess about then he would be looking at that rider going ref and all that and it was just yeah. giving it a bit of yeah yeah it was good and i think i think that was it was just that little bit extra that it made it a little bit more exciting rather than right you can't move there you go yeah who knows yeah. borderline taking the fun out of it <laughs> yeah it has it has definitely Hello, Mr. Hurry. Mr. Paul no. Hurry's on as well. Evening to you both. Norm's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hurry, good evening to you. <laughs> Hopefully Graham's on as well. He normally comes on as well. Top man, Graham. Right, so I've just got uh, yeah, Jimmy on the YouTube here. Let's just put Evening Martin. I know you had one season at Dudley Wood. How did you find it and what was it like riding with and against people like Eric Gunderson and Hans Nielsen? I have to say that Eric was exactly the same as Hans. He, he sort of, he was a little bit more friendlier um, when you approached him, I suppose, because of his smile all the time. He always seemed to be happy, even if he wasn't. Yeah. Um, I think with Eric, he he was very um, forthcoming with all of his, his in, all of his information that he could give me. Yeah, Don't forget, I was coming up. I was probably 17, 16, 17, somewhere around about that time. Yeah, and. I was taking on board what, what I was being told. And I thought at one stage that I was going to go to Cradley, um, but I ended up going to Oxford. So it was um, it was time to listen to these people that were world champions and that that's why they were where they were. 
And I, I do regret sometimes when I've um, I've been abroad and that I should have really taken it on board. Actually, what was I doing there? I'd qualified for big championship rounds, but I wasn't really taking it on board of why I was there. Yeah. And it was because I was a good enough rider to be there. It wasn't that someone said, oh, we're sending you there. Yeah. And and I have to say, I, I do I do, um, I do, do realise now that actually I should have tried a little bit harder back in the day. Mm. But we can't we can't go back on that. We just yeah. had, it's good that I've now realised and accepted that's where I was uh, a little yeah. bit slack. Yeah. Do you think that was because you, know, you just had the natural ability and stuff like that? You just know that you were good. So you sort of almost have that little bit of not cocky no. maybe but i think i was i was quite happy to race in the uk at the mm -hmm. time i was making a lot of money and riding all the meetings in in england um at one one year i think i did about sort of 90 to 100 meetings mm -hmm. which was like if you said that to one of the kids now right here you go go and do 90 meetings or 100 meetings they would struggle yeah. but to me, then obviously when they added Sweden onto it, it was a completely different ball game. Um, I I didn't struggle in Sweden, but I never really rose to where I thought I could do in the UK, and that was just purely because of my ignorance and not really on the ball with what other riders were doing at the time. And now I've now I'm sitting on the other side of the fence. I can see what everybody's doing, and you think, oh, okay, maybe I should have tried that maybe i should have done this and i do feel as if i i had let myself down at certain stages but i can't do anything about it but i, I actually it is nice to realize where i i could have gone a little bit better and i i think that maybe i should have realized that i should have done a few more open meetings should have gone to germany but if you're set up in the uk and you're having good meetings all the time why put yourself out there to to be humiliated by the others because you could go to germany and you think like 10 points in the uk 12 points the night before go to germany you struggle to get three or four points and you're like what is going on and then you come home all disheartened next english meeting 10 points and then it didn't really hit me until probably five or six seasons in that maybe i should get have different stuff by different tuners from a different country yeah and by then i'd sort of blown all my international career out the water but yeah i i do i sort of realize now and yeah. it was a bit too late then but i was quite happy just plodding along um didn't really like the early morning starts but i i have to say when whenever i was in sweden i used to travel with john, john davis all the time and john looked after me he pointed me in the right direction and when things weren't going exactly right john john was always there, always there to hold my hand and and say right this is why and he, he he was quite a big influence really especially when i was abroad yeah who was your actual biggest influence in general um i really never had anybody uh, it was all it was all sort of tap sort of but it was all sort of self-taught um when it went, went wrong you knew why it went wrong um yeah it's it was very hard because when i was at eastbourne i went through the rankings very quickly and all of a sudden people were looking up to me and i, I didn't know what i was doing i was just able to ride a bike yeah. i had fast bikes i had quite a lot of ability to get around eastbourne i'd been there for years so there wasn't a little bit that i didn't know yeah um so that was that was really how i managed to get through and i never really had many mechanical breakdowns and that was part of it if you can keep the bikes running week after week after week. And then um, I went to Oxford, which was very similar to Eastbourne. Yeah. And um, same again, it took me sort of like half a season to get dialed in around there. Yeah. And I have to say, when I was a top in the National League at Eastbourne, when I went to Oxford, I was like, wow, this is hard work. I went from being a superstar to a reserve. Yeah. And you think, okay, right, this is a little bit tougher than I thought it was. Yeah. But Gradually, again, worked my way through the team until I was up as a heat leader. And then I never sort of really turned around and went backwards from there. And of course, when Oxford closed, I went back to Eastbourne, which I knew anyway. Yeah. So it didn't take me long to, to sort of move around, but I was always within my comfort zone. But I had a few tracks I absolutely hated. I mean, I, I hated going there. 
Peterborough, Bradford. Yeah. All, all the big fast tracks. I was absolutely terrible. And uh, there was no reason why. I could have one good meeting at Peterborough in three seasons. Yeah. But it didn't sort of worry me that much. It was just nice to pack everything up and come away. <laughs> What about uh, what about Swindon? What did you think about Swindon? Was... I love Swindon because uh, only for the fact that it was more like an English track. It had longer straights than most, and the turns were tighter than than your Swindon. Uh, then your um, Swindon turns are much tighter than your Bradford turns or Peterborough. So I, I'm yeah, I always tended to have good meetings around there, yeah. which is which is a bonus, um, especially that it's only like two and a half hours, three hours from where I live. Yeah, so it's it's when you travel four and a half five hours up to Bradford and then you know that you've you come away you've you've been like absolutely pebble dashed you've got cuts <laughs> everywhere your arms hurt and I, I didn't I don't think I ever went to Bradford and had a good meeting maybe seven or eight was a good meeting for me around there yeah. not one you look forward to then that no good. no that and Sheffield was another one I struggled at Sheffield mm-hmm. but um, if you say three tracks, four tracks in the whole of the UK at the, at the time when I rode, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. What about Exeter then? Oh, I love the place. Did you? Know. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice, it? it was, um, I think when Mark Loran, the season Mark Loran was there, yeah. um, I popped out, made a start, and I knew he was going to chase me down. And I broke the track record around there. And I was like, all chuffed with myself. Like, you wouldn't think that you was going to. Uh, get the track record and that two three heats later mark went out and broke it again so i was like okay it stood for a little while yeah but yeah i I love the place it was it was long straights again just nip the curb in up to the fence like a big diamond and once she was out in front it was so much easier Mm. yeah i i like that and uh, it it just seems one of them like I, i used to have um good meetings at exeter i've had a couple of good meetings at um peterborough uh, Kings Lynn was very hit and miss, depending on on the circumstances and what sort of meeting it was. But generally, um, I used to have a good season mostly everywhere. I wouldn't say that some tracks were fantastic, but people, places like Reading, I had good, always had good meetings at Reading, Wolverhampton, um, Lakeside, another one, Ipswich, yeah. all, all, the, all the sort of smaller ones I, mm. I was quite at. And I think when it got round Swindon, then it got a little bit bigger and faster. I just didn't have the technique for them. It's more of just a balls out thing, isn't it? Instead of the technique too much. Yeah, yeah. And I think if my my Eastbourne my Eastbourne bike that I used to use at Eastbourne used to go really well at Swindon for yeah. some reason, but it would go it would go good there. Wolverhampton, Reading, Swindon, Ipswich. Um, Paul, it was hit and miss at Paul, depending on whether it was slick or grippy. Um, but generally, my Eastbourne bike used to go do most of the, the circuits in the UK. Do you, um, I was gonna say that because Eastbourne, even though it was like a trick small track, it always looked fast still. Um, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's one of them that you the harder you rode it, the easier yeah. it was. Yeah. Everybody used to put big sprockets on because it was tight and they didn't have the speed yeah. because obviously they, they sort of undergeared themselves yeah. um, or overgeared them. It depends on, on what, what way people were thinking. Yeah. Um, when when I was there and Bobby Ott was there, he, he used to run three teeth smaller than anybody else. Yeah. And I was like, okay, because I'm a mechanic for him a couple of times. And I was like, I wasn't sure that he was running the same sprocket as what was stamped on it because obviously people change them all the time. Yeah. Not, not giving any secrets away, but yeah. when he had 58 on, I had a little count up. He had 58 on. I checked the counter shaft sprocket, same 15. You're thinking, all right. So engine sprocket used to run 17 or 18 on there. And you think, okay. But he was just one of them riders and he would ride that bike everywhere, it, whether yeah. it was Bellevue. He was just a very talented motorcyclist. Mm. And I think nowadays the bike setup is more critical mm. than it's ever been. Mm. 
that's all it seems to be about, isn't it? When they literally talk, that's all they talk about. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you get hashtag who who sets up all this stuff for Poland. Yeah. Um, okay, he he sends Kowalski. He sets all these up. Polish tuna. You got Fleming, Pete Johns. They all have their countries and that, but they all seem to be um, very very sensitive on their setups. Like you. Mm-hmm. When I rode, you could put um, a 62 sprocket on the back and go right the way down to 58, 57. Now you put a 57 on, and actually, if it was, it would bike go nowhere until you put a 58 on or a 59. It would, the power band now is so small. Yeah. And it's just, it's just knowing and getting it right. Yeah, it's making it, like I said, a very fine line, and it? it's making it hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. I suppose the riders are sometimes spinning around doing that going up and down. <laughs> well, I, I think that the, yeah. the other thing you get in Poland is um, we went the other day for practice for Sam and yeah. uh, they were just doing laps after laps after laps. It's like, and we never get that opportunity in the UK. You can't say that any of the, um, well, Glasgow, you, you could go to Glasgow um, and get laps if you needed to. But I don't think there's anywhere else in the UK, maybe Red Car, if you went and practiced or Scunthorpe. I think that's the only places you can go. So when you've got only three places in the UK, um, it's very hard. And when you turn up, the track is like a roadway. So you're not going to learn anything anyway. But like you said, there's a lot of the stadiums are always run by the dogs, or obviously they're not owned by the speedway, so they don't, hence Poland can practice and do that. Yeah, and a lot of the stadiums in Poland are owned by the councils anyway. So um, to, to get sort of, to get into it, if they're run properly by the council and run properly as a club, yeah. um, the majority of people can go and, and practice on it. As long as you sign, the, sign a contract and you're part of that team, they're quite um they're quite willing to to help you <laughs> just see uh, just spotted this <laughs> kelsey has just put a uh, full night drive he goes you didn't even want to drive to denmark <laughs> no <It> was, <laughs> me, me and kelsey we have a, a very strange relationship <laughs> tell us about it uh, unfortunately unfortunately kelsey believes that i'm his mechanic and i should help him drive his van to denmark when he's helping Kenneth Bier. So I don't really understand how he can think that I have any excitement of driving through the night for him to get back to demo. And then he said, oh, well, I'll fly you home. Well, that's very kind of you, Kelsey, thank you. But I don't want to spend all night traveling across the Europe. Yeah. And uh, just hope you have a nice, safe drive, Kelsey. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Colin Richardson said about the answer the new stadiums with roofs, but the investment is huge, as you say. Set it on 100% of the meetings will run, therefore, TV will buy in. Yeah, that is like a big thing. Like, even going to Cardiff, when I go to go to Cardiff, you think, well, at least it's on. You book yeah. a hotel, you know it's going to be on, you're not worried about it. Got close a couple of times, mine, didn't it, when they were well, messing around there a few times, but <laughs> we yeah. won't go to that. <laughs> well, I think, I think the problem being is that if you want to. You, you really, the, the idea would be a fantastic sort of a top person being interested in Speedway, a pop singer, someone like that who who loves the sport, any one of the Formula One um, drivers who are now driving now, someone like Lewis Hamilton. If, if some of them just took a little bit of interest in the sport, you, all of a sudden you get thousands of people following. Mm-hmm. But I think the problem being is they would only follow it for a little while until they realised actually... Where is this going? And and that's the problem is you need you need top people to be interested in it. Mm. Everybody says, oh, Coca-Cola is sponsoring. Coca-Cola wouldn't touch Speedway. Mm. So it is a bit of a, you, you are trying to sell a bit of a dead horse at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Colin just said that uh, your dad, uh, Bob, used to pay my fines when I rode for him, and um, when I made my fifty-fifty uh, dives from behind, he said a bit of first made interest, hundred percent. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think Colin, that is my inheritance that he may have paid it with. 
but no, yeah, Colin's right. It's it's that sort of thing. Is that people knew that he was able to do that. He was he had the ability to do it. Sometimes it didn't always uh, work out, but um, people were a little bit wary of Colin because he was able to do that. But if my dad paid for his fines, then fair play to my dad. Oh, Mister Mister Midlow's on as well. 112 most I did in one season, 90% in the UK. Mr. Yeah. Neil Middlebitch. Yeah. Well, Neil and his crew. That was what it would be. And uh, and fair play to him. It, it's, it's the way you set yourself up. And unfortunately for some people, they are not able to do that at this time. And the cost of traveling and getting people to work for you, it is, it is a right drain on the system. But... Um, like Neil said, 112 meetings. That's fair play to you, Neil. No wonder you retired early <laughs> after 45 years. <laughs> it's wrecked. Uh, Neil's still going as well. Top man, yeah. he's still managing down a pool. Yep. Yeah. He, he, his heart is like Speedway all the way through and through. And I think that's why he's, um, how would you say, he is one of those people that he is well respected throughout the whole of the sport. Yeah, and um, he's carried that from racing right the way through to being a team manager. Yeah, I've had a great career the other side of the fence as well. Uh, yeah. We want to get you on as well, Neil, on your own. I know we did that Christmas special at time. We need to get you on your own and get all your picks up and all that. Be good. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, Robbie's put Martin. Uh, what are your memories of Hackney? Also, having spent most of your young life around bikes, was it uh, disorientating after? Hiring, how did you adjust? Good question. Oh, I'm still adjusting now. Mm. <laughs> I think I think um Hackney was was one of the good places I used to go to. Um yeah. it it was small, I was able to get around there. Um I didn't do that many meetings at Hackney for the fact that when I was in the National League, um I did a couple and then we was in different leagues and then I moved to um the British League as it was. So I missed quite a few years of being at Hackney. And then they came back when we were, I think we was all in uh, one league, which I did a couple of meetings there, which always had good results around there. So it was a nice place. Um, unfortunately, it's another one that's, that's gone down and the Olympics was put on the on that plot of land. Um, but I did work at the Olympics. I felt quite at home there when I worked at the Olympics. And, um, yeah, i I got to say it was a... A nice place to go to i always had sort of reasonably good results there yeah. and uh, i think it's just another one that was lost to uh, development and um like you say the other thing um after retirement i was quite lucky i, I went in to work with a family business which sort of took a little bit of stress out and and obviously the um the speedway was always running in the background so i could always go and and watch it so that wasn't mm -hmm. a problem but I do find sometimes now I think, well, I could have done another maybe 10 years of racing. But I had I had just had enough of it. I'd, I'd gone, it was it was always a passion, then it became a business, and then it became a bind. And then you think, okay, it's time to give up now. I, was, I think I was 31 at the time. It's just about last year, what I did, were actually. Yeah. yeah, I think I was about 31. But, especially, when you, especially, especially when you look at some of the riders that went on to ride as long as they did, like Greg, and still winning world championships in his forties in the end, wasn't he? Well, yeah, yeah, and Nicky Pedersen, he's still yeah. going. I think even Rennie Holt is still riding. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think so. But obviously, you, I might as well finish while I was at the, at the top of my game as it was. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe I made a mistake. I could have probably do, done another, maybe five years, maybe ten sort of gradually step down the different league but i just i just had enough of all the traveling backwards and forwards and i sort of lost the love for the sport i don't think it's ever going to come back the way it was yeah. but i do feel that maybe um it's sort of coming back a little bit because i'm able to help tom and sam and that and put my knowledge that i have towards yeah. them and and that sort of helped me sort of um become instead of being cut being a popular person where people was able to talk to you 
and they sort of put you on this pedestal. All of a sudden, I was just a normal bloke down the road. And I was like, hmm, this is a slight change. Yeah. But I, I accept that now. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when you go to Poland, people recognize you and that, which is which is nice. Yeah. But it's it is history, isn't it? You just gotta let it go. As much as it hurts. <laughs> yeah. That's why we like breaking F on air mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we like a reminisce. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, Peter said Neil Middleditch, the other 10% was in the German beer tents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a subject as well. I'm not sure who wrote that, but they said, what does Martin think about the electric bikes in the future? They've been doing it on the motocross. I believe there is some e-bike things. I know they're doing on speed. There, there, there is. The Danish people have bought them out. Ah, yeah, um, yeah. E-bikes. Well, mm. I do believe methanol is eco-friendly as well. So, what is e-bikes compared to methanol? I don't think you're using the same tires, so you're using the scrubbing the same same tires off the the bikes. The only thing is you're burning cleaner fuel than petrol, so you're not not getting the emissions. But I don't think it's um, it's nowhere near as bad as people think it is. Whether or not e-bikes. When I rode, people, the silence has changed. And they got quieter and quieter and quieter now because they, they say they are too noisy and they're not environmentally friendly. But in the old days, there was just a straight through silencer and people used to go for the noise and that. So I think the problem being is e-bikes, put them out there, no noise. Yeah, I think it would be a complete disaster. An absolute disaster. I think the noise is part of the sport. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> David uh, Vincent, uh, who was your favourite uh, rider to uh, team ride? I presume David means. I did have that down as well. Who was your favourite to team ride with? Was it Dino or Floppy or Darren Graylin at Eastbourne? <laughs> I, I, to be honest, all the all the team when I rode with them, all of them were good at the team riding. I couldn't say any of them were bad. Yeah. And if you can team ride with any of them and you get a five one, then then your your job's done. Yeah. But there was no I wouldn't say there was any favourites amongst all of them as long as we was picking up points and that. I, I was a happy camper. So yeah, there was um there yeah, there was no no one in particular that I had um a favourite spot for or they had a favourite spot for me. Yeah. But if we was out and about and was able to do what we, we could do. Winning was winning is the name of the game. What about for Team G? Was there any riders you connected with team riding on that side of things? Not really, because the the, the problem the problem with that is is that everybody was at such a high level. Um, mm. If you was lucky enough to team ride, then yes, it, but you always had someone who was always going to hound one of you. So it was it was like just be red down, go and make it look as if you're team riding, but it never really happened for me. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. Just be honest. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. Um, did you have? Uh, did you prefer the team riding? Uh, sorry, the team racing side of things, or did you prefer to be uh, in the individual meetings, or you like? Both? I, I prefer team. Um, yeah. I, I always sort of excel better when when we were all part of a team because that way we just sort of spread out uh, all the. Um, any pressure that was out and about, it sort of all went between us. Mm. So um, if I wasn't having a particularly good meeting, maybe Dean was, David might have been having a good meeting. We all covered for each other. So that's why um, team racing is better. Individual front, yes, I've had a few good meetings, but they were few and far between in, in the years that I rode. But they're always ones that you remember. So it was... I always prefer when I anybody says to me, what are your favourite meetings? Against Mildenhall in the 86, 87 in the Knockout Cup Finals, they're the ones I remember for the right reasons because they were pure racing um, and it was it was much better racing back then. Yeah, it was good racing. Just looking at uh, some cool pictures here, some nice... Uh... Yeah, that was that was a long time ago. I would, yep. I would imagine that was 87, I think. Um, 86, 85. 85, maybe 86, maybe. 
I literally, when I went up there this year, I uh, was I've seen uh, Barney Kennett a few times and, and got to speak and, and meet Gordon properly at uh, yeah. Oxford. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like like Gordon is. <laughs> Gordon is one of them. He he loves Speedway, and that's all he sort of he come through all the way through it. Um, and you've got to say for for the amount of years he rode, he was very good. Um, unfortunately, he just maybe carried on maybe a couple of seasons too many, but that's because he still believed that he was going to be be good at it. Yeah. So um, I think that was a team there where we went through. I think that's eighty six this year. And I think that was when we went through and we won the knockout cup. But it was like, yeah, yeah, Dean Standing, Chris Mulverhill, Steve Chambers, Russell Lanning as a promoter, Andy Buck, Keith Pritchard, me, and Gordon. God, did well to remember all those names, didn't I? Yeah, you do that really to the rack of your brain. No, <laughs> oh, my God. That's it. Love it. Did you, uh, especially when you were younger, did you like seeing like, um, did you like uh, get, picking up the Speedway Star and seeing that you're on the front? Was that always cool? It it never happened that many times. Mm. And I, I always believe that, why do they always pick a horrible photo? <laughs> and But it is, it's one of those things is that you can, I've learned now that if anybody's talking to you, always smile because yeah. you never know when your photo is going to be taken. And then you can always look back. And that's what I always say to Tom is yeah. always smile when you're out there. Don't matter what's happened. Yeah. If you're standing on the rostrum and, and you've got a, a face like a, a slapped ass, people <laughs> remember it. And you think, yeah. why is he so miserable? 20 years <laughs> down the line, they won't remember that you've had a punch and you've had a bad last ride. Yeah. And I think that is that is the difference between what you you try and project across to people. Try and smile, always smile. Mm-hmm. No matter what's going on behind you or in front of you, or it, how much weight you've got on your shoulders, just smile. Yeah. I did see a couple and I thought, <laughs> shall I post them up for the <laughs> Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they're not all pretty. No. no. <laughs> a couple you weren't too pleased about. <laughs> I was trying to smile, honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, did you, uh, was it always um, just nice to be on the front? And- yeah, it was it was nice. Obviously, we there was always that competition between um, the the top of the riders like me, Gary, uh, Mark Laram, um, and then you had Hans. He was like always um, one of the top dogs around to to go on. Yeah. Because if you got these and Sam Emelenko, if you got all these top riders, yeah. why not why not put them on the front of the magazine? Yeah, and um, it was just a question of right, who's going on it this week. But I, I like what they're doing now with the Speedway style where they've turned around and they've put all the youngsters on the front trying to bring mm. them up to realise actually you're not being overlooked. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, you've certainly had plenty over the years. Yeah. <clears throat> nice one. Got some, uh, that's a good picture. Yeah. That was a um, oh, long time ago. 80 or oh, don't know when that was 86 maybe 85 86 okay. that's when we had really had port covers didn't we port clubber port covers steel clutch levers yeah. i remember them little plate things on the front it's almost like a bmx thing yeah, um, that's it yeah yeah didn't, didn't sean moran used to have one. one of them rounds had one of them as well I remember. yeah i think it was sean that On the uh, country-wise, when because uh, obviously when you rode for, I used to really enjoy like the test match things, you know, with uh, Americans and Sweden, Danes back then and stuff in the eighties and nineties was always cool. Was it always uh, looked to me like there was not not always everyone got on in the British team from what I could see. I suppose it was just called England at the time. I think. But, well, um, I think um, the, the the biggest problem was that you had when you had all the Americans over they were very united with each other because they they were a small group of people in the uk when you have the english um riders we was all from different parts of the uk we all believed that we was all better than one another and when you put us all together we had all we all had this little bit of like oh i can beat him or he can beat this 
each other. So we all sort of there was all that always that little bit of rivalry between us. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was um that was one of the big problems that we had. We weren't really or never were united as a proper team because there were so many of us to choose from. Yeah. When you had the Americans, there was probably only six of them that were, were good enough to make a team. Yeah. So was your dad always harsh with you with the speedway? Harsh but fair. He was. No, um, that's what you mean. If you if you did something wrong, he wouldn't think twice about telling you. Um, yeah. He he was looking back at it now. He he seemed to be very fair on on everything that we did. Yeah. And um, yeah, he sat on the fence quite a lot of the time, yeah. but. Um, it's like everything in it at the time you think that he's having a moan but generally he was but yeah for the right reasons yeah sometimes you just think your parents are doing that anyway yeah <laughs> you have some uh was there any injuries over the years um that you feel like maybe stopped you from even achieving more obviously it's a dangerous sport as we all know and i remember you rising with some bad collar i think even this i remember I don't know. That's, this a, that's a Commonwealth final when Smudger yeah. turned um, left on me coming out of the corner. <laughs> that's I mean, he still talks about it now when I see him. Does he? Like, he laughs and jokes and walks off smiling, but we know he tried to kill me. But <laughs> it, it was um, how would you say it was? It, yeah, it's broken collarbone. If yeah. you you couldn't get away with that now, like Ooh. I can't even remember remember where I was. I, how, when they ask me questions, I don't know how I answered them, but I have to say is don't remember anything about it. Oh. So the, 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 um, <laughs> yeah, but the, the thing was, I, um, I'd obviously break my collarbone there, but it was so far separated. It actually didn't hurt when I did the rerun, but obviously yeah. when the adrenaline started to run out a little bit and I thought, well, this hurts. Yeah. Then it was time to, once I qualified, it was time to go home. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Apart from that, and obviously with Steph, the crash of Steph and a broken pelvis, dislocated thumb. Um, I broke a few collarbones, done an ankle. I've done both the scaphoids. It's funny because now um, I'm in the last couple of years. Yeah. I've had more operations now than um, I've ever done. Just put yeah. myself right. Did you feel that at the oh obviously you did feel that at the time, but did did you did you actually feel like Stefan sort of did that on purpose kind of thing or at the time, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um look looking looking back now, I, I I don't believe that he did it intentionally. Yeah. Um it was but, a bad one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it was one of those things, wasn't it? It was um it was a racing accident. Stefan mm. blames me, I blame him. We had a bit of fisty cuffs about it. Um, a lot more went on behind the scenes trying to sort it out, especially with the Mike Weston when he, because Stefan rode for um, Kingsley and Mike Weston thought he was able to take us to the solicitors and clean us up. But a few things went on that um, actually was completely wrong and uh, he sank himself with it. And uh, I think Stefan realised that he was listening to the wrong person and um, accepted that he wasn't going to get anything and he could come back and ride because they told Stefan that don't ride for a month, we'll get all the money paid for all your meetings you missed and stuff. So that, that was a bit of a carry on that he was uh, unfortunately led to believe and try and try and get something that way. But I think really Stefan could have come back within 10 days. Yeah, That's only my side of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, Steph. But I think I think after that, I think um, I raced Stefan a couple of times in in Sweden, and yeah, we're fine. We haven't seen each other for I don't know thirty years, maybe more. I'm sure he wouldn't remember it. <laughs> we did. Yeah, I remember it going viral at the time. It was on everything. Oh. It was everywhere. It was like yeah, it was absolutely everywhere. Yeah, I think it got five hundred to a thousand. More through every gate in the country at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get down there. We well, I remember. I remember going to um, Wolverhampton, 
and I had a, a good meeting there. And I won a bottle when when they announced my name on on the parade. Not one person cheered. It was <laughs> dead silent. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I went and won Rider of the Night because yeah. I had a good meeting, and I was given a Magnum bottle of champagne. And I just offered it to anybody who wants to come and get it. And this one bloke, he walked through the uh, the crowd and picked it up. And uh, fair play to him because they just booed him as much as they booed me. <laughs> but it was yeah, it was it was interesting. He he wanted the bottle of champagne, big magnum bottle. And after that, I think everybody sort of just let it go. Yeah. Well, fickle fans anyway. Uh... The Midland fans all supported the Yanks. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? If yeah. you if you have a, a rider who is good, yeah, whether he's Danish, English, or whatever, yeah. it, why not support them? Mm. And I think they that, supported them, didn't they? And from their own yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's the same with the Danes when they were rode at Coventry, yeah. Oxford. Everybody supported them. If you're good, people are going to support you. Yeah, but you just need to sort of drag yourself up to be good. Yeah. Frank uh, Sorensen as well. And I know Frank's Danish. He's put which Danish rider was the hardest to ride against. There was a lot of good Danish riders. Wasn't there? I, I think they're all hard. Mm. All, all the Danes are um, very... The, the thing, if you ride against a Danish rider and you hang them on the fence, they shake their hand and go, nice ride. And they would do it to you. <laughs> so you knew what you was doing if you was hanging them on the fence or, or whatever. Same with Nikki. Yeah. I think every says, oh, he's dirty and that. Nicky isn't dirty. Nicky is just hard. And I think that's what the, the people, they don't like. Um, if Nicky was behind him, he would sort of move him over, run him up wide and ride off into the distance. Yeah. And then, but if you did it to him, they would all, they all accept it. All the Danes accepted it. Tommy Knudsen, Hans, they were all, they all accepted it. Yeah. And I think that is the, the problem in the UK or, or most places now mm. is that if you're a bit tough on people is whoa you're a bit hard there we don't like that in our sport yeah. and that's where all the the problems are going yeah. no villains no uh, you definitely need a pump out villain 100 or a few uh lisa gilby has put uh, how did you uh, feel then to have your your brother riding at reserve when you were in the top five at oxford I think it's like everything. It is always a family thing. Um, Paul was Paul was always, uh, how would you say, he rode Speedway. I don't think it was his first choice, but I don't think he had any other plans to do anything else. Yeah. And he just cruised along quite happily um, doing what he had to do. So it, it, Paul is a completely different person to how I am. And his speedway was his speedway, and my speedway was my speedway. And he had good meetings and he had bad meetings, yeah. but he, he he enjoyed his speedway. Yeah. I remember him at Swindon as well when he was uh, he first come there at reserve as well when he was yeah. young. Mm. He did he did well for us. Yeah, he had mm. some good meetings there as well. Mm. I enjoyed him. Got some beauties here. I hope this is you because a few of them I was thinking, is this definitely him or not? I was like, because I told you that. Yeah, uh, no, nah, that's not me. Ah. That's that's Paul and Dennis Segalos. Oh, uh, yeah, it's Dennis. I thought it was you. No, that's pretty cool that you did that. Look at the crowd there. Jesus, we'd yeah. be happy. And uh, <laughs> we'd be happy. And the main meeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't <laughs> remember if that was before or after the meeting. Uh, that's pretty cool. We wouldn't even be allowed to do that now, would we? No, well, <laughs> stand that close. No, they just definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Let's try again. That's me and Paul. Beautiful. Yeah, way back. I don't even know where that was. Yeah. I know we went to Poland and Rome, but it's not big enough for Poland. Mm. Look at us sharing a bike. Yeah. I do like a big scuff on Paul's crash helmet. <laughs> Right, that's the thing. What about this one? Is this? Yeah, that's that's when we went to Poland. That's a, a Polish. Um, when we, I, I think that was when we went to Lesno. Oh yeah, I can see the 
the Les no bit. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That must have been a bit of an experience then to ride over there at that age. Was that a bit daunting to have a little ride around? Yeah, well, we only did a couple sort of like um, a, a few laps before the meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was just nothing, um, nothing fantastic. But yeah, it was, yeah. it was a bit of an eye opener. I, I suppose what was I being twelve, maybe less. That's a. Uh... Oh. Jason Lyons, he helped me break my collarbone there, but he did say sorry. <laughs> I've also got another one of mine on here, so now I'm still just the same incident. I was looking at it. There's one uh, reading right at the back. Of it. Is that it there? That is Jason Lyons, isn't it? That's yeah, the one yeah. in color from behind. So that actually broke your collarbone, did it? Yeah. Well, you can see that there's nearly his engines on top of your. Yeah, he, he, he yeah. unfortunately, Jason just picked up just as I yeah. was. In the wrong place wrong time i think that was the time i went out at peterborough it was england v um australia yeah and i broke track record in that the race before and that was the second heat and it just got grip, grippier and grippier and unfortunately jason took off mm. yeah did you always uh the, who were there was it well i know there was but was there always riders uh, is a certain riders you always had to keep an eye on was there any riders that you always used to keep, come together with in general was there riders out there sam Emelinko. was it I, yeah i used to crash with sam quite a lot not intentionally yeah but we were just both racers and we would race for a little bit of track that we both wanted yeah and but there was no malice in it um it was yeah there you go so yeah sam, sam was um unbelievably good mm. I, I heard as well that a few I've seen a few riders said that he, he didn't mess around though either. If you uh, no, no, if you Sam, got Sam, it, it yeah, Sam was as hard as nails, yeah. And um, but he, he you gain respect with Han, uh, with Sam as, as you did with hands, and once they they accepted you as that, you, yeah. you was fine, but yeah, you never if you if you rub Sam up the wrong way. He would always rub you back up when he had a chance. He would never forget it. Yeah. And that's that's what all these world champions do. They never forget. Mm. Maybe that's where I was a little bit too soft. Because mm. I think all the all those riders that won the world championships are they all had edge, even the ones that made out they were nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. Have yeah, you have to have some sort of edge. It's a nice one. It's a bit close. That one was that. Tommy that's, that's Tommy Nudson. It's funny after that he fell off i don't know why <laughs> then um that was that was at oxford and um it we went to the starting line it was absolutely hammering down with rain yeah, and um tommy's he's made a fantastic start gone right round for he's done three and a half laps and this is the last turn before yeah. we get to the finish line yeah now unfortunately i've come across and under him like that totally yeah. out of control in the rain yeah. Yeah. He's gone down, and then I managed to wheel you all the way across the uh, finish line. But unfortunately, I was excluded, um, which I deserved to be really. Yeah, yeah. But he was—he was another one, wasn't he? He—he he was a uh, the ultimate professional Danish rider who who was as hard as nails. Mm. What about the Americans? Did you get on with all the Americans, Martin? Did you? I I I sort of I did and I didn't. I I always sort of found Billy a bit tough to get on with and Greg a bit tough. Mm. Um, and then when I went to America in 2010 and, and did some, did a meeting with um, Martin Hagen out there. And I got to say, Billy was a completely different person to what I thought he was in the UK. Um, and everybody said, oh no, Billy's, Billy's, Billy's all right. And it was only when I was out there, I realized actually Billy was pretty cool. He was, he was a nice guy, and he had this um, thing about him that he'd come across a bit cocky in the UK, but actually he was a very, very nice, down-to-earth person. Mm. And uh, and I, I wished I'd sort of realised that back when he rode, because I, obviously if someone's going to be a bit tough on you, you'd be a bit tough on them, and that's the way we were. But when you sort of took the speedway out of it, you realise actually he's a, he was a really nice guy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another, another top racer as well. 
Oh, of Sean McConnell. Just yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. He's saying about you with a you was a great uh, indoor rider. I had a question about that about doing the because uh, he used to do mm-hmm. the ice at Talford and didn't they do yeah. one on the on the dirt, wasn't it? I remember we, seeing we did, um I, well Sean and Bobby Schwartz used to come over and do the Brighton indoor. That's it, Brighton and indoor. Yeah. We did um I can't remember now how many years. I think we did nine or ten years at the indoor in Brighton. And then uh, me and John Cook done that. Um we knew Sean was good at the indoors. Yeah. And he'd come along full of character. He was um he was for someone who was at the older end of his career, he yeah. could still really get round there. And uh, yeah. you never you could never shake him off. <laughs> he he was a racer through and through, which is yeah, he's nice, and obviously when we went to America, bumped into Sean and that, and yeah, he's a really nice guy as well. And I have to say, all the Americans are nice. Yeah. He was a proper entertainer as well, because I remember when I was a kid at Swindon in the 80s, and Sean came over and did a season and that. I think he did some with Birmingham as well, and he uh, was one of the first ones that's always seen doing wheelies and stuff like that, yeah, like yeah. bringing that side yeah. of things in. It was good. And obviously then it was like, bloody hell, wheelies. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Yeah, now they do triple flips on their motocross ways. Yeah, like, wow, what happened to one leggers? <laughs> yeah, or well, maybe just take your hand off. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was cool doing one handers to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! That's a good one. Uh, who's uh, who was Martin's engine tuner? I didn't really. Uh, Trevor Hedge was the one we used to oh, buy yeah. all the, the engines from. Yeah, um, Trevor used to do my motors. For the most of my career mm-hmm. i was lucky enough to be able to get some vice engines via marvin cox yep. but they didn't really suit me they maybe they were meant for me to go around germany on but they didn't really suit me in the uk yeah um, i had a couple of engines from michael blicks yeah, um, yeah. before he went in and made the carburetors yeah. and they one was very good and one was very good on big tracks which Obviously, I didn't really need to use in the UK, so I used it a couple of times. Had a good couple of meetings at Peter on him, and that's the same one I, I won the uh, Grand Prix at in um, Coventry on, and that was just purely a standard engine. Michael tuned it, and Trevor has just maintained it. So he's, um, yeah, there at back in my, my day when I was a little puppy, uh, there wasn't so many engine tuners around the world. So you was very limited to um, who you picked. You know, they, in, well, I suppose there was Eddie Ball, um, Peter Johns, Trevor Hedge, um, Carl Bloomfeld did a few. So there wasn't that that many people around. Well, did you always like the technical side of things as well? Did you like getting into the bikes? Did you do bits? Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, even now, um, I bought myself a couple of 3D printers. Um, I've made a few things for bikes now, which oh. I'm just sort of giving away f- to the riders because I know that they, it will probably take a couple of years before everybody realised actually they were good. So there is there is little bits and pieces of mine that will float around and people go, where'd you get them from? My, yeah. my, the silly little thing is I put, I've got a laser cutter and I just do these oh. broke um, throttle tops. Okay. So, but when you look at Bartos's bike, he's got gold throttle tops on with his his number on and three gold stars for three three world championships. Oh and Jack Holder's got them. Adam Ellis has got them. Lots of yeah. people have got them. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's just saying I I've programmed a machine up and and I just sit there and now I've got the template. I just cut them out. Yeah. So that and three D printing, I'm, I'm quite happy. Yeah. Sounds like we'll get, is this going to go into a business, isn't it? Well, I I don't want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we we like lots of stuff that I've I've done has mainly gone to Poland because yeah. you know the trouble is if you make something that is good mm. and you give it to someone like Bartos and that and he uses it he doesn't tell anybody where it's come from. Oh, don't <laughs> no. So you're better off doing it like the way I do it is just give it to the lower ranked riders in the UK. If they don't buy it from you, you give it to them. And the people that are making the money in the top league, make them buy it from you. Yeah. And that that's the way it should be. If the, yeah. if if the youngest if the youngest boys can't afford to have the parts, we can get yeah. the top boys to pay for it. 
good show. Yeah. Like and that. that's that's the way I tend to work. Fair play, I like that. Fair play. Um, what was I doing? I just saw someone's question. Oh yeah, Robbie's just put. Tell us about Kelly Moran. He seemed to manage to be mates with everyone. <laughs> Kelly, he loved everybody at the bar. <laughs> he, um, unfortunately for Kenny, he he was an out and out nice guy. Mm -hmm. He didn't realise how good he was on a speedway bike, but he was phenomenal. Him and Sean, both of them were. Yeah. And um, you just you just forget how talented he was. And obviously his lifestyle sort of got the better of him. And um, he was quite happy being back in America instead of coming to the UK. Mm -hmm. And I don't think even Kelly really didn't even realise what Speedway meant to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he, he just unfortunately, he went a different way to what everybody expected. But Kelly was one of them. Oh, well, it'd be all right. And he didn't never really worried about anything. Did he? Uh, did you? Um, did what do you, you said about that? You uh, watch the BSN and stuff like that. So obviously yeah. you've watched. Yeah, do you watch obviously on the? Is it uh, Eurosport? The, the, the meeting we've missed tonight. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, yeah. I, I. I try to. Obviously, uh, I will watch it a little bit later or tomorrow when it comes back up. Uh, just yeah. flick through it. Um. I think it's good that we're able to do that. Uh, but would be nice to be able if you could uh, just go there. But for me to get to Manchester or to watch a meeting like that, you're probably looking five hours to get there, maybe more. So it's um, it's a long, long trip for me to get there to watch a meeting to come home. Yeah. And that that is that because Manchester in the wrong place, or is it because I live in the wrong place? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Different opinions, different areas. What about did you watch the Grand Prix? Do you watch the Grand Prix as well? Honestly, I, I, I watched the Grand Prix. I am a bit of an anorak. I love filling the program in for the Grand Prix. Yeah, yeah. I just sit there. I'm, I've never sort of been one of those people that just go, "Oh, look at this." But I, I like to see what everybody's doing. Yeah, and um, yeah, we have a bit of a not a flutter, but between me and um. Connor and and that we we tend to have a little bit of a dig at each other to see who's gonna win. Yeah, yeah. but uh, as long as Bartos is in it, we're not allowed to choose him. All right, right okay. Now, we we have to we have to we sort of look at out the bottom of the field the riders. Mm -hmm. We have to choose which one is going to become in the middle of the field. Who's going to be the better of the the bottom three riders? Oh, interesting. So it just makes it a little bit more exciting. Yeah, when you're watching them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why well, it's better. But I've got to say, the World Cup the other night was yeah. a shame for England, but I think at the yeah. end of the day, um, the best team won. Yeah. So as much as it yeah. hurts. Yeah, I think it killed us, didn't it? When I think they ran about three laps of the trot, I think, at that, right near yeah. the end. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think it was Tom Bewley and Ty, wasn't it all? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. 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 But as you see, you made a gate and you could be at the That's front, it. but don't yeah. last. So I was like, wanna tie you on a couple of and stuff like that. Yeah. Who excites you to watch them now then when you watch them now? Is there any what riders um uh, your seat type of thing? I, I I think watching Bartos on TV is phenomenal. Um yeah. you can see that he wants it still, even though he's 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 gonna be world champion again and the way he's going. Um there isn't actually many other riders that I want to see. And I think that's a shame, really, that you sort of limited it to one rider. But it's nice to see um, the English boys gradually sort of stepping up. Tom's yeah. come from nothing. He's stepped up. Yeah. Dan Bewley, fantastic. You wouldn't believe that he could be this, um, this so pleasant, relaxed guy that he yeah. can go and do what he does. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm very pleased that um, the English boys have are stepping up. Yeah, I haven't been to Cardiff for ages, and I went last year, and obviously uh, to see him win there was uh, very cool because I didn't yeah. miss the uh, Harris one. It was looked amazing atmosphere that year. It looked good. Yeah, I think the problem with Cardiff is that it is a bit of a um, it is a social weekend, but it's a very expensive weekend, and you can actually see more of it on TV. Yeah. So um, that, yeah, like for, for me, if I was to go to Cardiff, I think it's about three and a half, four hours 
from here. Yeah. Um, you can't afford a hotel um, for, for that night or whatever it is. Yeah. Four hours home, meeting finishes like sort of 10 o'clock. Yeah. I'm not going to get home much before three. Yeah. Especially if you've got to get across the bridge to get out. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's a long yeah. way. Yeah, that's the only bummer that they put all those hotels. Like we went in a crap hotel, and it was like, like I don't know, quadruple the price basically yeah. just for that one night. You got you went the next night, and there was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, as unfortunately, um, they they know what's going on. They know where they're going to put the prices, but that's why they tried to drop the start time a little bit less, didn't they? So that yeah. people could get home. Maybe they should make it about one o'clock. Yeah, yeah, keep going early. Yeah, yeah. But I, I remember last year as well. It ruined it because the trains they were doing a train strike and all that, and loads of people oh, were wow. like, and all that. They, that ruined it quite a bit as well. I think that made the crowd quite less. But uh, yeah, someone just said I will watch. I always record. I hate watching breaks. I don't know about you guys, but I just hate adverts. So I record everything. I don't think I watch anything. Twenty-seven. Thanks, 27. Anne. Yeah. Thanks, Anne. So it looks like it's gonna. Looks sounds like an interesting one so far so uh good relationships did you have good did you have mechanics did you have friends doing it did you have proper mechanics um, i started off i did most of it myself obviously as as you do yeah, yeah. um then john cook the promoter was um my sister's friend and one day i was working on my bike and charlotte yeah. invited him around and said oh my my brother look at that for you and I see John turn up in his estate car with his bike laid down in the back and he wheeled it up the driveway. I was like, what is this pile of rubbish? <laughs> and he, he, what he wanted to learn how to ride speedway and he had bought a bike. He had been robbed, but he loved it. And so we, we patched his bike up to make it runnable. And from there onwards, um, John used to come and mechanic for me. Didn't know too much about bikes and that. And then he went from there and then if he was doing he used to be um like property clean maintenance john did oh, yeah. and um there's me and him on on the buffing machines at night i would help him because he was going to help me and that's how we went for a few years and then um i had um peter clegg he did a couple of or two seasons he helped him buff and then did a couple of seasons for me yeah. and then colin davis um did a, a, a the rest of my career with me and then he moved when I stopped. He went on and helped um, Dino and Stefan. Um, who else do you have? Uh, Stefan Anderson a little bit and Simon Gustafsson. Oh, yeah. Simon, yeah. So, yeah. So it was, yeah, we all, we, we never had an out and out mechanic. And to be honest, um, you need somebody you can trust in the UK, the amount of miles you do here. Mm. Oh, uh, hi, Rob. Rob Brad just put, hi, Lee. Many thanks to Martin for helping us out with my granddaughter's bike this season, Rob and Tia. Yeah, well, we had a bit of a situation. Um, Tia was on a, a 140 or a 125, and then we put her onto a 150. Mm -hmm. A little bit of dealing backwards and forwards between my son and Rob went on towards bikes, which we're still trying to sort out now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we here end up with a, a 150 Daytona and um, she's loving it, which is, I was happy to help Rob out because he had helped Kelsey out. Yeah. And, and Rob come around with loads. He's a butcher and he come around with loads of hamburgers and steaks and that. Right. Which is happy about. So thank you, Rob. Yeah, yeah. That sounds, that sounds good deals. <laughs> yep. What's going on here then? That was, um, that was a photo shoot that, um they asked us to do that was actually my uncle's plane oh was it and, um he flew us from shoreham to is it kidlington airport or something near oxford kiddington yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that yeah and yeah my patrick did a couple of photo shoots for for some magazine and that was it straight back in back to brighton oh, and see a bit of a weird old haircut <laughs> I used to like all these things. I used to do like stickers and stuff. I got like uh, stuff like that from back in the day as well. Yeah, yeah. That was some guy. He, he. I think that was UKR. This guy was that did all these, and he did quite a top 
sort of few people around. Yeah. And, and then he, I think he said that he was going to sponsor me, Jeremy Doncaster and a few of the boys. So we all had our names put on his, our suits before the season started. Never heard from him again. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's really old, isn't it? Even Jimmy Nielsen looks young. <laughs> yeah. Like Troy Butler as well, isn't it? Was that 1990? Yeah, it's a sudden break, 1990. Yeah. So that must be, yeah. That was when, yeah, that was when the World Final was at Bradford, wasn't it? Can you believe yeah. of all the places I made the World Final was at Bradford? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Not the best places for you then. No, no, no. But they don't have they don't have um, world finals at small places, do they? <laughs> what I was going to talk to you about as well, obviously the 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 really cool one about obviously you went there as a wild card for that British GP and won at Coventry. Yeah. Um, that was that was a uh, pretty amazing. I watched it all on TV, and uh, actually it was one of the ones I did watch live. I'm glad I did. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, that was pretty special, actually. Yeah, well, I I'd gone up. The, the rules have now changed, but I went mm -hmm. up um, the day before. Yeah, uh, almost. I I had ridden at Coventry a week before. I think I was either guesting for Peter Carlson or Michael Carlson at the time. Yeah, for Wolverhampton, or I, or I was riding. I was riding either at Coventry or for Coventry against Wolverhampton, something along those lines. And um, I went and had a really good meeting against all the top people. And I thought, well, that's all right. We'll just clean that bike and put it to one side. I know the setup. So come the following Friday, we was meant to go up there, have practice, meetings on the Saturday. So I, I rolled up, signed in, as we did. Didn't even get, I didn't even take my bikes with me. I just <laughs> took, um, we had Brent Collier with us, who used to ride for Eastbourne. And he was, yeah, I think he was having a young Australian, be young England at Oxford. So I signed in, said hello to everybody, and then watched a bit of practice. And then we went, drove from there down to Oxford. Then I mechanic for Brent the next night, as in that night, sorry. Yeah. Um, he rode at Oxford. We come home, and then I loaded my stuff up and went back the next day. So I never practiced, never really thought about it. I just took it as a normal meeting in the UK. Yeah. And then obviously when when you think, oh, I'm doing all right. And mm. uh yeah, one thing led to another and I I got sort of to the sort of semi finals and thinking, I haven't got enough tires. So Marvin Cox was working with Todd Wilshire at the time. Oh so yeah, they, yeah. They lent me a tire. Oh fair, fair. So that's how, yeah, without them I wouldn't have got well may have done but i i'm i would have been a bit stuck towards the end of the meeting so yeah it was just one of them nights everything clicked and it sort of the rest is history but it's sort of really for me it, it was yeah it, it, it's a shame it wasn't just a one-off world final because mm. it would have been oh look at that surprise yeah well, i was gonna actually ask you about that i actually had a question about that saying did, did you like the gp or would you did you like the one-off world final what's your thoughts on all that i think the 24 riders in the grand prix with the knockout mm -hmm. i think that that was a fantastic the, the, the one that i won the format for that was good yeah. it's quite expensive because you have 24 riders there you've got to pay to be there but um that that's the way it goes mm -hmm. i think that was really good i think that was probably the better grand prix <laughs> Mm -hmm. um apart from that the one-off world final um i i would say that they were the real crowd pullers mm -hmm. but they will never go back to that mm -hmm. i suppose it was a thing they just sort of built up to all through the through the year and obviously there was a lot of tension because it was all on the night yeah that yeah. Type of I, yeah i i was mm -hmm. like when Javi won it in rocklaw um i was there Ninety two, wasn't it? Yeah, ninety two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there in his pit area, helping him clean all his body color. That was my job, keep his body color clean. But um, I was there anyway, just for the fact that I was reserved because Slavomir Rabbit, he was he finished the highest 
Polish rider who scored out the two rounds went in in Poland. And I think the pole in the UK got three or four points. Slavomir got five. So I was the lowest qualification rider in my round. Mm -hmm. So I got kicked out and was replaced by him. Wow. Otherwise, I could have been in that meeting as well. <laughs> Not that I would have scored any, but I'm just saying that that's how, how it worked in those days. Wow. That was a mad meeting as well, wasn't it? A mad meeting. Yeah, yeah. Remember all the, was it, didn't they have fire engine things or something, pumping water off? It was Yeah, like, well, that, we had a big, it was one of them sort of days, that it was beautiful sunshine in the morning. Mm. And then um, I think Slavomir's mechanic was climbing up on top of the pit's roof, and it was all glass in those days, and he went straight through it and cut himself to pieces. He <laughs> fell on the floor, right? so they had to take him away and stitch him up. Jesus and um, so they put like this cover over there just because they it was so hot under the, the glass, it was like a magnifying glass. Yeah. And then, of course, it pours with rain. So he's the only person who's got a hole in his pit area. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was it was one of their meetings. It had everything. It was like raining, beautiful sunshine. But have he deserved to win on that day? Yeah, it was great as well because he was like uh, almost in that like long track style he did, didn't he? Sort of like literally yeah, yeah. Like on the on the straight. Yeah. I was just looking. I think he was I giving a, it full beans. Yeah, I had a picture of you that looked quite good like that. You went like that it was a good one. Oh, that's a nice one, right? Yeah, that's in Kumla. In the um oh that that was the World Team Cup in Kumla in ninety two, I think. Yeah, I, I do believe I, I scored I won my first four races, yeah. beat everybody, made them look silly, and then run when I thought I was gonna get a point, I come stone bonkers last. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh dear. <laughs> like that, that's Hans and Greg behind me. Yeah, I can see them. What's this swimming here then? That was when that was when um, Eastbourne did a meeting down in Ribnick. All oh, right. Oh, sorry, Oxford. That was when Oxford went down and did a meeting in Ribnick, and Hans was yeah. there, just like a one-off sort of thing. Oh, right. See Paul there and Hans is by you. Yeah, Paul, Hans, me. I think on the right of the arm is Stephen Davis. Oh, a bit pink, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember him as well. So, back in the day. Probably going to say, is that an Elite League Riders, maybe? British. No. Is that an Elite League Riders Championship, maybe? No. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think it is. And if it is, it'd be at Bellevue. Oh. At Kirkenshaw Lane. I'm sure it is. Did you, enjoy that? Did you enjoy that means? Because they were like stronger than world finals half the time when they were all the number ones there. Jeez. Yeah, I think I think like everything, isn't it? It was if you had a good day, you had a good day. But nobody oh. really took it that seriously. Only the people like Hans and Sam who were the out and out number ones who who knew what it meant. For me, it was just another meeting. Mm. where that's where my mentality was wrong. I should have sort of took it by the, the horn by the balls and, and just picked it all up and turned it all round and, and sort of shook myself up, really. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think that was my own stupidity, really, not not really being interested in it. Yeah. Just say I think how dangerous I could have been. Mm. Yeah. So that was a nice old trophy. I gather you didn't get to take that home, though. No, unfortunately, um, no. the guy in the, in one of the photos, another one, uh, Johnny Glees, he's standing in the background in a, pl a blue sort of jacket. Yeah. And he said, "Oh no, you can't keep that one, Martin. That stays here in the cupboard here at Coventry." I was like, "All oh, right, okay." So we have we're allowed to have it for the photos. Then it's taken away. Yeah. And um, on that way, on the way home, he was killed in a car accident. Bloody hell. Mm. Bloody hell. Jesus. That was a scary one, eh? But yeah, that I remember um that being quite um one of those meetings that the, the track was really rough and deep for the first <laughs> there's a bit of a story to that one. Yeah, we um on. we was at Eastbourne the night before 
and yeah. you know, all, all our sprockets on ready to race a meet in the Eastbourne. Mm -hmm. And um, it was cancelled. So we went to um, Coventry, mm -hmm. popped out the start. Oh, the bike's really going fast. Not not as fast, was, wasn't having a problem turning or anything. And then I said, oh, we maybe we should take the sprocket off, maybe take a tooth off because I'm not feeling the, street, the, the, the speed at the end of the straight. Realised we had my, my Eastbourne gear in on it. I thought, like, oops, okay. But so then we just went down a sprocket and gradually sort of worked it from there. But that just shows you sometimes it's all in the head. Yeah. So yeah sometimes yeah. you just need a kick in the teeth just to work it out. Yeah. So you let even the number ones get out there and... Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would imagine there's a big hole somewhere. <laughs> yeah. If you can't get rid of it yourself. <laughs> That's right. It's like that will take off in it. Yeah. Brilliant. Can you remember them uh, suits they had? I think that might have been the. Was that even the year you might have won the league with Eastbourne? When they had them. Um, Lycra suits. suits. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. They were the ones that when you wanted to do a start and you sat on the front of the seat, you always end up on the back of my guard because they were that slippery. <laughs> yeah. They were yeah. absolutely. You could see what they was trying to do and yeah. you could see that the way they was trying to do it, as in the cheapness of them. Yeah. But they weren't really fit for there what we go. people wanted. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then, then you had the um, bike covers as well. Yeah. And the helmet colours. Yeah. Like, the, the helmet colours were great because what they did was they covered the front of the helmet up. So where you was trying to breathe, if you was red hot, you was just breathing <laughs> your own own air. So you were steaming up. So that was a... A horrible oh, problem. Yeah, it's not a good time. No. no, it's not what you wanted. And unfortunately, um, they did change them after a while. Yeah. And then in the end, what we, we ended up doing was we was having to cut a big, um, cutting the whole crutch out of the suits just so that you could sit on the seat. Oh, they were funny. Back in the day. Yes, I remember them well. They were the only thing they were good for. I remember having them at motocross, and uh, you could just put them out, put put that uh, helmet thing on for practice when it was muddy, and then yeah. sling it. Oh, I haven't yeah. been it. Was <laughs> did it always mean, yeah. Did it always mean a lot to you to represent the country, your country as well, in stuff like that? It was. It was always nice to be picked. Um, yeah. But it, all, all the time, it always comes with with pressure. And yes. I think that that was the problem: is that um, if you're going to be this top profile sportsman you got to yeah. accept the pressure yeah. and it, yeah eventually um you know one day it's all gonna smack you in the face but yeah it was always nice to uh to ride from the country you always enjoy the the british finals at coventry were always proper weren't they as you and melvin cox actually and dino, yeah that's dino and i think uh, annie smith yeah but yeah it was it, they were i think the, the the issue with them was that they were um they were hard meetings yeah. the british final they're harder than what they are now yeah definitely. that's for sure they were pretty stacked weren't they yeah so right, Cal, Cal, yeah that that was um that's the intercontinental final wasn't it with the americans when they joined us yeah looks like they did on the outside i think that's greg and ronnie Corey. yeah but uh yeah, I'm just looking at these. That's a nice one. Adams, uh, what did you always? Um, he was a good bloody rider. That's for yeah, sure. I think um, I think that we, Lee was just unfortunate, really, that he never won a world final. He was yeah. the most. He was sort of one of the most consistent riders around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was just unfortunate that he never, never popped out and won a world final. Who were your closest mates in Speedway then? Did you? Mates in Speedway? Um, I suppose well, all, all of the Eastbourne team, when, yeah. when I rode there and the Oxford team, there was nobody really that didn't sort of, um, didn't hate in the team, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah we all got on well. Still, still see Dean and that now. Haven't seen David for a few years. But... Um, yeah, we, we all get on. There's there's no remorse between us all. Mm. And it was That's a cool. knockout cup, wasn't it? 
when we won it. Yeah, yeah, that's when I think that's when we beat Cradley. Um, when we actually rode on first or second of November, which we didn't expect to win. No, <laughs> that was uh, yeah. I, I looked on there earlier and see that you'd won four or five of them. Was that one? Was any with Oxford um, as well? Yeah, I think that was with Eastbourne. That that one was with Eastbourne. I think yeah. we run the knockout cup in 85, 86, 87 for Eastbourne. Yeah. And then we won it a couple of times with um, Oxford. And then again with Eastbourne. What age were you when you sort of thought to yourself that you could make a career for yourself? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, no one really knows if they can make a career out of it. You just got to keep mm. going until you decide that actually there is a there is something to be made out of it, and you could be two or three seasons into racing. Yeah, and that that's a thing. Nobody says, "Oh, he's going to make it." Yeah. What about riders? Look, when you were young, did you? Was there any speedway riders you really looked up to? Was there any Eastbourne riders you really idolised? Um, not really. I think um, always Kelly, Ron Preston, because they was the big Americans that with mm. them Bobby Schwartz. They were all the ones that were there. Um, everybody idolised them. You idolised them, but you were so young, you don't know why you idolised them. <laughs> um, yeah, but at, like Kelly, he would just turn up, rock up. Um, his bikes would all be done for him. Big superstar. And then... The, couple of days later he'd be around my dad's house playing snooker and pool with us playing football in the park so he was just like even though he was Kelly around this big superstar he was just one that just used to look after us mm. so yeah he was he was yeah he was one of them that sort of I remember sort of as I was a younger yeah the one you sort of look up to yeah do you have any? Uh, have you ever had any weird superstitions when you race? No. What would be? Would be. It's the best way. Some people. It, it, it's easier because then you haven't got to go through like touching your crash helmet. Make sure you've done it. If you haven't done your crash helmet up, you've got to check it. Then you know you've got a problem. Like these riders just... check the crash helmet, then they push the gloves on. It's like, wow. Okay, come on. <laughs> Robbie, I think we touched on it a little bit earlier. Robbie's put which rider was helpful to you when you're coming through international standard. I'm thinking of the early England days, Wig, Doncaster. Did you ride with Carter? Um, John Davis was the one who sort of helped me mostly when I was yeah. abroad and that. Yeah. Simon was um very much Simon was his own man. He he was if he had something good, he would never tell you. Wouldn't but if you had no no, and if you had something good, he wouldn't know the ins and outs of it. <laughs> yeah. um, but he would always like I said before he would always smile and be nice to everyone Yeah. but he was always he was very much his own person and it, it was only one direction Simon was going in and that was yeah. whatever way he decided Yeah. But I never I never rode with Kenny Carter yeah. so you actually won was it five league championships in the end I think one with Oxford Two with Eastbourne, and then obviously the what was it called then? The second division. What did they call it then in the late eighties? Um, I think I won eighty six, eighty seven at Eastbourne. That was two. Then we won it twice yeah. with Oxford. Yeah. Four, and then we won it in with Oxford. We won it with Eastbourne in two thousand when it was a single. When it was just the one league. Yes. So I, I don't know what that. I don't know what that was called then. Yeah, it was it, wasn't it? Elite League, and then it was for Premiership. Yeah. Oh, it's getting confusing, wasn't it? <laughs> it's getting confusing. That changes that. That was a cool one. Silver Helmet. Yes. That was, that was good. That was a, um interesting thing. I obviously didn't know much about it. And one meeting, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, you're in the Silver Helmet. You've top scored. It's like, oh, okay. So you went out, and then I beat, I can't remember who I beat in the first one. And then I kept it for quite a few meetings. I thought, oh, this is all right. And then um, I think it was Nigel Flatman beat me at Peterborough at the end of the season, and he got to keep it for all winter. No, yeah. it was gutted, that was. But fair play to him. He, yeah. he beat me fair and square. Yeah. 
I think that was a cool thing as well because I remember even in my like uncle and dad's day and all that, my uncle had the golden helmet that they had then as well in the seventies for quite a while, and he, they used to say he used to get good money from that, and he ended up with it by the end of the season, so he kept it all winter, and he was he got money for that as well. All right, I <laughs> so don't. Yeah, I, I think I don't know what happened because when I first got it, it never mm. had a peak on it. Oh, so okay. I, I had that. That was my peak that I put on it and sprayed silver. Yeah, and okay. I I think the peak wherever it went, whoever had it last yeah. has kept it because they can't find it. All uh, right, okay, that'd be interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. <there> <laughs> oh, this is a good one. I've just got uh, Simon's just come on, and he's put. Um, here we go. He's put, hi, Martin. I was the track staff at Wolves and uh, always a pleasure to see you at Monmore. I remember one year there was a few first corner incidents, uh, one league match night. Dean Barker had a tussle with Sam Romilenko and uh, 50 cuffs were about to start. You came running out and shouted, hey, Dean, pack it in. You're in my van tonight and we've got to get out of the stadium in one piece. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be about right. Great to see you, legend. Just, just looking after Dean. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's the the thing is you realise then that actually when you're away from home and it's just about to kick off, you think, yeah. "Ooh, here we go." I re I remember one uh, one bloke he was giving me so much lip as I was coming out of the stadium, and he threw yeah. his fist back, and I dropped the clutch in the van, and he punched the side of the van rather than me, <laughs> the A frame, and I just laughed all the way out. And like it was really? it was just one of those things like if, if it was going to happen, it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Did you, you said you liked uh, Wolverhampton as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Wolverhampton was good. I always yeah. tend to have good meetings there. There wasn't that many I had that were poor, should I say. Mm. I hate watching sometimes the TV and you know the lines, just yeah. as a, a general rider in general, and you, just write, you know the lines and they and they don't ride the lines and it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> You, you could do a little bit better there, but the trouble is that the, the bikes have changed and and the way everybody rides is, have changed and that. So Speedway is a different animal now to what it was when, when we all rode. Yeah. And uh, I think that's at Bellevue, isn't it? That's the Commonwealth final at Bellevue. That's good. I think I'll come second in that one. That was a good one, Yeah, that's a, that's a knockout cut one, isn't it? It's see, like, uh, do you see how nice colour coded my bikes were? The red seat, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah, oh, Alex, that, Griff Alex Griffey. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that that's obviously a Bellevue, isn't it? Yeah, and that's Carl Stonecure and Stephen Dano. Yeah, I have spoke to Carl as well. I'm going to try and bring him again. Yeah. All right. Yeah, good one. So old Mr. Smith, he did well, didn't he? Cause he didn't he win like was it three on the trial or something like that? Yeah, he, he he won three three in a three years in a row. Yeah, he loved that, uh, but he? unfortunately, Andy was a Andy was a very good rider. Um, yeah. but he was on his home track. Yes. Um, and he, that's what he he signed up for Coventry, knowing that that what that's what it was going to be. So fair yeah. play to him. He was thinking outside the box before anybody else. Yeah, would have been like you said. It would have been nice to. Like potentially move it around all, all the time, potentially. But I know they always had a good thing going on there at Coventry with the, with the crowd. With, and... with a good thing about Coventry, it was right in the Midlands, wasn't it? So, yeah, exactly. It's the there, there is, I can yeah. see much. And you could fit when when it was big crowds there, you could actually fit the, the people in. Yeah. Uh, there is nowhere atmosphere. else, really, that you could have oh. put anybody in. They were a flipping good atmospheres there, weren't they? And then, yeah, yeah. And then, absolutely. Like, Definitely the British final days that everyone remembers was at Coventry. Yep. Best ones. That's, that? yeah. that's a bit of dirt on there, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was, um, that's obviously a Co Coventry, isn't it? Yeah. That's when, that was the overseas final at Coventry. What was your memories as well? Obviously being um, British under 21 champion as well, I remember. <sighs> so long ago, I can't even remember. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I can't Do remember. You know that? <laughs> yeah. all, all that sort of has just sort of faded away and just gone into oblivion. <laughs> That's absolutely classic. What is your actual favourite memory in Speedway? I've obviously got loads of highlights, one loads of 
big players, um, perhaps the British Grand Prix. Different ones. Um, always remember the, the winning the knockout cup at Eastbourne yeah. um, because that was obviously new to me at the time. Um, I remember knocking Tommy Knudsen off in the rain because that, that was one of those things that was completely different. Um, then there was against Swindon when we had a fight with Pete, um, Brian Carger. Oh, yeah. That was that was one. That yeah. was when everybody got in, involved with that one. Um, and like I talked to Brian now and we laugh about it. But yeah, back yeah. Then it was like complete, oh, my God, I can't believe you did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was all the ones, all the incidents that that happened that people were like, oh, that was terrible. You, they're the ones that you remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and anything that was really good, um, I remember the, like the Grand Prix. I I remember. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember ever going out on parade. That's completely gone. I don't even remember getting changed. Um, all I remember is that when I came in. Straight away, they took me off to a press conference. Once they'd done whatever they did, like the the presentation, they took me off to a press conference. Then I was in there, and then um, I remember leaving the car park probably about two o'clock in the morning, because they were, um, or or maybe it was late. Or no, we didn't get home till three o'clock, so it must be one o'clock. We left there yeah. because they strip all your engines down. So okay. yeah, yeah, if you're the top three. They yeah. strip your engine down, make sure that they are within the right spec of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, we was obviously that's the last thing we expected. Yeah, yeah. So then yeah. Had, uh, yeah. yeah, and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it's all those sort of things that you remember. Yeah. Rather yeah. than than winning anything. Yeah, yeah. Did you like all the grass track and long track? Did you like all that side? I um I did a couple of grass tracks. Um, I did the bonfire burn up a few times in, yeah. in Kent, obviously because it's local to us. Yeah, uh, it was good attraction for the Eastbourne people to go along there. Um, I remember going down the straight and everybody shutting off like the grass track people do, and I was still going flat out. So I went through and like um, ten pin bowls and ended up in a big heap out in the, the safety fence. So yeah, off nice. I went to the hospital. Um, I've done a couple of grass tracks in France and um, I did one in Italy with Martin Hagen um, and he took my bike down there for us and that met him there, went out at the start, never sort of done anything like this before. Thought, oh, the bike's really zinging, forgot that there was a gearbox on it, changed gear and I was all up with everybody, absolutely getting covered in sand. And I couldn't breathe. I was being sick in my crash helmet. I was on the infield. It's like, I don't think we do this anymore. And that yeah, was it. That was the last time I ever. ever was it? He just did that. Yeah, yeah I just, he just did nothing for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it frightened me, really. Yeah. Yeah. So. Totally different thing, really, isn't it? I got some weird ones of them as well. I've seen some of them ones that I've watched Calvin and then obviously Wiggy and Calvin yeah. loved all that. Is those ones where you do the turn and it's almost like more like a motocross track than a flipping. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like the Tetra, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. yeah, I know. I've I've seen it, but yeah. I never, I never yeah. would have thought. I, I never, I'm not really a motorcyclist. I'm I'm a speedway rider. I can do left turns, Yeah. but stick me on anything else, I'm a fish out of water. Motocross bikes, did you always do the winter thing that a lot of the riders no. did? or No. No. Never. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So it was, yeah, no, I, it never, never interested me, and and that. Yeah. Mm, interesting. I didn't know that. Didn't know that one. Mm. Uh, Rod Saunders here. He's put mine. You're the best. I'll never forget you and your family. Been a while. I hope everything's going good for you. You're a true legend. Never forget that. Your buddy Sledge. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, it's nice. All, all these names coming back. Yeah, loads been on here yeah, tonight. Have you got any regrets from your career? Um, not really. I think everything was everything that happened happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. And one of them is that everything is plotted out for you anyway. Yeah. Um, no matter which way or what you do, um, you're not going to change anything. If people don't like you, they don't like you for for whatever reason. Um, probably didn't help myself in, in most instincts, but. Um, 
I, I don't, I don't wish anything that um, I couldn't change. So it is what it is. Um, life, life is too short. You don't know what's around the corner, so you might as well just do your best when you got it. And if it means putting a bit more effort in, which I should have, then that's what I, that, that's probably my really biggest regret. Best, best team manager that you worked with? Um, I would say John Cook. Yeah. Yeah. What was good about his ways? He was, um, he was very fair. Um, mm. he, he, he wanted to win as much as everybody else and he didn't really take that many prisoners. Mm. Was there many teammates over the years that was a uh, pain in the ass? <laughs> not really. <laughs> No, not really. I think uh, I think were. most of them were, um, most of them were. It was all in a team to be be part of a team, and and you couldn't really afford not to to be in a team. And I think that's the difference now. Speedway has become very individual, even if you're in a team, because you could be in one team in Sweden one week against someone, then next meeting you could be in Denmark racing with that person, and then yeah. you could be in Poland racing against them, and back in the UK racing with them. Yeah. So it's everybody is gradually becoming individual races again. Yeah. I'll just ask you a couple more. I do appreciate your time. We've had a really good time tonight, and the loads of people have been coming on with their questions. We appreciate them coming on as well. If I had to push you on something to say, who were the three best riders that you ever uh, competed against in your career? Who would you say they were? Which is um, obviously Hans Nielsen. He he was out and out class. Sam Emelenko was out and out class. Yeah. Um, the third one. Oof. See, I could go. Uh, I think those two were the, my most that I wanted to be, even though Sam was on my, uh, hands on my, my team. Mm -hmm. And Sam was always like top dog wherever he went. And he, there was always this little bit of aura about Sam that, you knew he was having a good meeting if you beat him. Yeah. Um, and I, I really, um, there wasn't really a third one. I suppose any any of the number ones in any of the teams, if you beat them, you know you was going to have a good night. Uh, what's Robbie put here? Most important, you look healthy, Martin. Are you happy? Kids? Depends what you call happy. <laughs> 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 I, I, I've got to say that, yeah, I, I'm. Life goes forward. We all go forward. The only thing yeah. that never stops is the clock, and it you don't know when it's going to stop. So, um, we don't know what's around the corner. Just take it as it comes. Life. Kids, yeah, they're both here. They're both happy, as far as I know. Well, one is on his way to Denmark. We found out tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to be cheeky. Yeah, <laughs> like they are. Oh, brilliant. If I had to say, what about a, a, a favourite one to seven of all time Eastbourne Eagles? You as um, I wouldn't go purely on ability. No. Uh, I would go on 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 purely on um, how how good they were within the team. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get my pen. Um, yeah. Right, <laughs> Keith Richard. He would yep. he would definitely be in the team. Yeah. Uh, Dino, Dean Barker. That's yeah. two. Um, Stefan Egberg was always a good laugh. That's yeah. three. Uh, Peter Narlene, four. David Norris, five. You'd be happy to use that. <laughs> yeah. Um, who else would you put in? Gordon Kennett, because he was always out and out and out. Six. Um, it's a tough one because you're just trying to, you're just trying to feel it. We would go more for a laugh than we would go for racing. Um, yeah. Peter and Arlene. He, 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 sorry. Yeah, that's, seven. Is that seven? I think, you, I think you already said Peter. So. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. no. Um, who would be? Oh, I, loved, I loved him as a Swindon as well, Peter. Yeah, he, he was he was um, really good at Eastbourne. Very chilled, mm. very laid back. Mm. 
Wow, you really sort of... Yeah, you thought you were done then, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was sick Gordon, didn't I? Keith. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Dean, David. Well, we, we go for uh, Stefan Dano. Not Backer, we wouldn't go for Backer. No, <laughs> I just say he was just done that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for that little name, but not this time. <laughs> Put you under pressure again. What about an Oxford one then? Oh, uh, it would have to be near enough the same team that we had. Um yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Marvin, Wiggy, Hans, yeah. uh, Mark Colson, me, um and Andy Graham. That's six. Oh. Nice. And who else? Um, just trying to think who who was. Yeah, I am now, <laughs> and I've deleted all the pictures, so I can't look at them. Who, who we're missing the, in that oh. time? What's this? Said Wiggy and Hans and Graham. Well, yeah, back in his day, you would say Ali Stevens because he was always good. I remember Ali Stevens, yeah. 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 Ali Stevens. Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> well, you put Dino in there, couldn't you? But he, he was, I put him in the Eastbourne one. Yes. What about, uh, before we go, oh, yeah, John Sermon, someone's just broke, remember him, John Sermon. Yeah. What about uh, if I, we did a, a, a top seven um, England team? supposed to say GB. In, in, in years gone by or in, in my era yeah in your era yeah um well it, i would like to go me have a lock loram um cox tatum doncaster and wig oh that's a side isn't it mm. <laughs> and they, as soon as you start doing this, people start coming up. I think it's a toy butler. Someone said Mogo. Someone's doing that. What about screen? <laughs> yeah. It's all opinions, yeah. guys. The trouble is with Screeny, you, you forget about him being at Eastbourne because he's always straight away you think of him being at Bellevue. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do see him as that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I remember he was at was he was that was he there the year you won the league? No, was it? Mm, might have been. Might have been actually, yeah. Yeah. That was when you had more black on it, I think. More black yeah. on it. Travelers. Yeah. Thank you for your time, buddy. I really appreciate no it. No problem at all. Okay. Reminisce. You were a I'm proper. Going to rewind the speedway and watch it tonight. Exactly. I'm going to go and watch it. Yeah. Probably watch it in about half an hour, I expect, without the brakes and everything. Oh. Hi, Martin from Preber and Ericsson. Ah, another one. Look. Been some cool riders on tonight. Back in the day. He yes. was a tough. He was a tough cookie. Always, man. Yeah. He was. He was as tough as they come. Mm. You, you knew where you stood with him. <laughs> there was no. There was no question. Another. Another good day. He's saying he doesn't want you to go down the inside of him, Robin. <laughs> well, he can turn left. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> depending what side he doesn't want you to pass on. Mm. <laughs> but he. He was. He was good but in his time. And yeah. he, he was, he was well, yeah. yeah, he was hard as they come. Mm. I'd love to get you on as well, Preben. Got to, got to get the reminiscing going, mate. Yeah. Get get <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Much appreciated. No, no, no. All right. Love, you take absolutely care. Love it. Proper legend, mate. Cheers, See mate. You, ladies. Thanks, Bye. Martin. What a ledge. Top man. Yes. Martin Dugar, brilliant. Thanks for coming on, Preben. I'd love to get you on as well. Talking about Mogo, I'd love to get uh, Mogra John. Who's got a who's got a contact from Mogo? I'd love to get hold of him on now. I just said to you guys, I spoke to Sean Wilson. Back on here again tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> Simon loves to see the Prebens on. Thank you very much, whoever that is. It's good, uh, great uh, time talking to Martin tonight. I'm sure. Uh, a lot of you, the fans out there, have been watching the live speedway as well. They they can watch the recording. So I'll share the uh, I'll share the link out for the recording tomorrow. Uh, it's all on my YouTube, Met across the sphere of memory. Yeah, it'd be good to get you on, Preben. I'll give you a message on Facebook. And uh, yeah, we're going to do uh, Steve Schofield tomorrow night, seven p.m. UK time. 
And then any of you motocross and supercross fans out there, I'm going to be doing American legend uh, Mike LaRocco on Thursday night, 8 p.m. UK time, because he's in uh, California. I think that makes it midday for him. So I'm going to do that as well. Like I said, I've been talking to, I've uh, been trying to chase up uh, Amanda Castagna, who said he was going to do well. I have spoke to Phil Morris, but I think we're going to pretty much do that at the end of the season, because as you know, he's a very busy man the Grand Prix and uh, obviously now being part of the British Speedway start, uh, side of things as well. So I spoke to him. I also spoke to Sean Wilson the other day. So looking forward to sorting that out. Don't forget the man Marvin Cox that we've discussed quite a bit tonight. He's going to be on on Friday the 18th. So it'll be a week this Friday. So we've got Marvin Cox to look forward to. I did speak to Jason Crump today as well. He's going to come on and do a live don't forget as well, I've got Barry Briggs coming. Uh, I've been sorting that out for a while, so hopefully uh, be able to sort out a date soon. Um, I'm get, definitely getting Barry Briggs on. He's going to sort that out with me as well. I've been talking to loads of riders. Yes, I would love to do that. I've got no contact. Uh, I suppose there's some riders I could ask if they have, but I'd love to do Dave Jessup. That'd be really good. So if anyone's got any uh, contact for Dave Jessup, I don't think he's on social media, I've seen um then uh send me an email or anything you want to send me on um you can see my numbers going across the bottom of the screen actually about our battle of britain motocross and speedway memories event uh in october i think my numbers is about to go back across there in a minute so you can send me a message if you've got a contact there you are look 077-649-78839 or message me on any social media and uh get hold of me that way any contacts is cool. I think uh, a few of the riders that come on tonight, I need to get on. I know uh, I said Billy Hamill's uh, definitely going to do one. I have been chasing Nicky Pedersen for a couple of years. Um, you can check out, I did one with Sean McConnell. That's on my YouTube channel, Saved. Uh, there's a few of the riders there. Oh, yeah, Eric Gunderson's on there. I did two with him, one with Bruce Penn and one on his own. Definitely want to do Billy Hamill. I did a Greg Hancock one that was good. Gert Hamburg as well. I'd like to do one with him seen him online lately actually as well on uh, facebook I'll have to get hold of him good show andy <laughs> gotta get peter on as well i know that'll be fun that'd be good gotta get middle on as well he was on tonight neil middle ditch uh, he did a christmas special thing with me with john davis dennis Sigalos, who's another one i spoke to as well dennis Sigalos, i need to get him on his own and uh also wanted to get colin richardson on we've spoke to him couple of times about that so i'm gonna have to try and nail him down to a date but i know he's over in uh dubai but hopefully uh he can come on and, and do that live would be cool yeah i've been speaking to loads of riders so uh, i'm back up i've definitely been back on it i'm chasing that rider so uh yeah i'll keep on it and uh, keep you all updated like i said i'm back on again tomorrow night 7 p.m uk time with steve schofield so that should be good as well i've got loads of cool pictures of him as well loads of memories to reminisce about and then i've got the uh, supercross mx star mike larocco on thursday and then we'll go from there and update you on what i'll be doing the following week hopefully i'll get uh mr sean wilson nailed down for a date and, and i'll let you guys know all that on social media as well here's my old man look here's in the old ashby there is i always do the got that uh the Grahams, Andy Graham and Jill Graham got that done for me with the logo of my dad with the saying I always say at the end of each interview. Look, it's nice to be important. But it's important to be nice. So we leave it like that. Thank you very much, everyone that come on tonight. I know there was live Speedway on as well. Maybe I might have to try and not try to do them on a Monday night when there's live Speedway. It might be a good idea, but uh, I, rec I always record them all anyway because I hate adverts. <laughs> so I record everything, GP, the whole lot. I can watch a GP in an hour, <laughs> that type of thing. But if anyone's got uh, a Dave Jessup contact, hook me up. And I have not done Gordon Kennett. Uh, I did speak to Barney because I did meet Gordon uh, at Oxford this year with Barney and stuff and had a good chat with Gordon. It was nice to meet him. A bit starstruck with Gordon, obviously, as well. And, uh, yeah, I, had, I did ask. I have asked a couple of times. I did ask Barney to have a chat with him. So fingers crossed. While I'm on here now, as I might even message him now and uh, tap him up because I messaged all the riders trust me on that <laughs> for you guys I messaged all the riders trust me I would I would message uh, any riders Nan or their cat or anyone that I can get hold of 
so yeah, I will try that, but don't worry, I'm on it. And uh, hopefully, like I said, I've got loads coming up. Hopefully you're gonna try and get David Norris on as well. Thank you very much, whoever that is, I appreciate that. Gordon signed my Westlake, oh, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to get him on. I've spoke to Barney about it, yes. I spoke to Barney, trying to uh, coax him in. <laughs> And uh, did speak to him as well at Oxford this year when I saw him as well. Yes, he's another one I've been tapping. <laughs> he even suggested that would be pretty cool. And he, uh, Dean uh, actually suggested coming on with David Norris on together. That'd be crazy, wouldn't it? Crazy cool, though. And like I said, I spoke to Jason Crump the other day. Uh, he's going to let me know when he can do it. I haven't done a live with him. I've done a recorded Skype a few years back. So we'll definitely run that back on a live with the fans. would be really cool. And like I said, Sean Wilson would be cool to nail that one down as well. That'd be good fun, I reckon. Don't think Sean would mince his words too much. But yeah, I've been messaging loads of the riders. Hopefully I can get Nicky Pedersen sorted as well, because pretty much we've been in dialogue for about, since I started this, about three, four years ago, we've been talking. It was always like, we'll do it in the winter. And then, and then it was never happened yet. So hopefully I'd love to get... Uh, Nicky Pedersen on, so we've been talking for ages. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? That would be uh, good fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm sure he'll watch this back later on. Uh, big love, love to Mr Norris. Also, so he knows that you made Martin Dugard's uh, uh, team of seven for the Eagles as well. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. And uh, big love to your dad as well, mate. Hope you're all good. If you see this later on, I'm sure you're going to watch the recording back. I didn't see you on there tonight, so I know you were busy, but uh, hopefully you'll catch us later on. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night and God bless. Much love to you all. See you all soon and hopefully see you tomorrow night if you want to come and see Steve Gofield, uh, 7 p.m. UK time live. Much love.